Merry Christmas everyone. I hope you have a fab time and get loads of sewing done. Hi everyone. I'm sending you best wishes for the festive season and would like to thank you for all your wonderful support over the last 12 months. Who could believe there's another new year just around the corner? I'm looking forward to spending more sewing time with you in the new year and looking forward to seeing all your fantastic makes. I hope you have a happy and safe Christmas. Lots of love. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all the Sewing Street fans. Thank you for watching over the year. Um, hope you have a wonderful time. And remember, keep sewing. Merry Christmas. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family run customer service team are on call 24 seven. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping. In need of a crafting fix. There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1 p.m. every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Good morning and welcome to Sewing Street. My name is Rebecca Reed. I just realised I never say that, never say that. So that's who I am, Rebecca Reed, and I am your presenter for today on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Very excited today because put my Christmas tree up yesterday. It's so beautiful. But put all the lights on and then half of them didn't work. Does that happen to everybody? Or is that just me? Have to then we sort them all out. But oh, only two weeks. Well, it's less than two weeks to go. Very exciting. I've spent the last week um, making lots of, you know you, how you get over enthusiastic and overly ambitious about making Christmas presents? I think that's me this year. I've suddenly realised I'm running out of time, so I've done a lot of full-on serious sewing this week. Anyway, we have got some wonderful treats for you today. We have got the most beautiful, I'm going to give you a little sneak preview of the box, beautiful quilt from Moda. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I've got to do the early bird first, but I just wanted to show you this beautiful Moda quilt. In a minute, I'll take you over to the other set where we've got the full quilt and I'm going to show you through the quilt, it, the kit, what's in it. It's gorgeous. But let's start off. Seeing as it's the 13th of December, let's start with an exciting early bird. Now, now, now. This is half metre of Philip Jacobs fabric. Now, Philip Jacobs fabric is one of Kay Facets friends and he um he works as part of the cave collective along with brandon mobley um and this is the only philip jacobs fabric that we have by the half meter and not only that we're giving it to you as a special offer so shall i open it up and show you this is what half a meter looks like now the great thing is is that because it's available by the half meter you can buy oh wrong way around you can buy as much as you like 
So if you want a metre, you put two units in your basket. If you want four metres, put four units in your basket, etc., etc. Isn't it gorgeous? On a very dull and miserable grey day like today, this is just what you want. Now, normally, designer fabric, $7.99 a metre. That would be your normal price. But I don't know why this is our early bird. Must be like a special Christmas present because this is just absolutely stunning on its own. We are going to drop it to, how much are we going to drop it to? I'm going to find out. So it was $7.99, but today and today only, $4.99. Wow, for half a metre. So it's beautiful jet black background, which really makes the flowers sing. Um, you've got beautiful blue, blue, blue blooms and pink blooms. I don't know whether they're specific um, flowers or not. Not very good at flowers. Um, and then all of them, and I thought it was a metallic, but it's not. The way that these are edged in yellow, they really, really stand out, uh, particularly against the black background. So I'm thinking, that obviously, this is a quilting weight cotton, 44 inch width, 112 centimetres. So obviously you think, you know, mainly it's quilt weight, quilt fabric, but it doesn't have to be. Perfect for homewares, but also dressmaking, summer dressmaking because it's that kind of um, dress cotton weight. It's absolutely stunning. Imagine the summer dress on that. Or I'm thinking one of those lovely kimono style dressing gown robes. It's gorgeous, isn't it? I think it would make a very nice blouse, actually. Quite like that. Oh, I've just smacked my mic. Wouldn't that look nice as a blouse, though? Or I'm thinking, you know, if you made a dress, you could have, would, would look beautiful if you had a plain black bodice and sleeves and then use this section for the skirt. Because one day it will be summer and we will go on holiday and then you could go in this beautiful new dress. Now for four ninety nine for half a metre, we've met, well, it's the only Philip Jacob fabric that we sell by the half a metre and it's at this amazing price. It's gorgeous, isn't it? But you can see the scale of the flowers. Look, big as my hand. They're really, really nice big flowers, aren't they? Beautiful. And I love the fact you've got all of the little branches as well. And look at the detail here in all the, the little petals and sepals. It's gorgeous. Love that. Really gives you, I mean, it's sort of a wintry but summery fabric as well because of the black background. But really good price. Now, that price will go back up at midnight to $7.99. If we haven't sold out, that is. Because um, this is obviously, unsurprisingly, proving to be very, very popular with you. And there are a lot of you putting multiples in your basket. So if it has, if there's any left, that price will go back up at midnight. But if you want to buy this by the half metre, have as much as you like until we sell out, four ninety nine, which is fantastic. I mean, this is a brilliant feature fabric. If you're thinking of, if you do want to use it for quilts, it's a really good fe fabric to start with because you can pick out the colours. So say you wanted to do a quilt that was blue themed, you can pick out the different shades of blue and match them in. Or a black would look beautiful as the sashing and the binding and the borders, but equally the green. But it's nice that each of the colours, like the pink and the blue and the green, have all got two or three shades. So it's really good if, like me, you struggle with colour selection and choosing how, what you put in with what. Once you've got a big feature fabric like this, it's very easy to colour match because the work's been done for you. Philip Jacobs is a colour genius. I mean, his, his design is brilliant. When I um, met Kaif, luckily, earlier this year at the NEC, and I was talking to him about why he chose Brandon and Philip to be part of his design collective, and he said it's because we all have very different styles. What they do, he can't do, and vice versa. So Brandon's style is very geometric, whereas Philip's style is very, very floral. And so between the three of them together, when they create their collective, their collections, the three styles work together. But I, I, I kind of think if Philip Jacob has got brand, um, cave seal of approval, then he must be great because he wouldn't have just anybody, would he? He wouldn't just have anybody in his group. I don't think he'd have me. No, no chance. I mean, he might let me make his quilts. He certainly wouldn't let me design his fabrics. Um, anyway, that's beautiful, isn't it? And what a lovely, lovely deal on the 13th of December loads and loads of you've got that in baskets and I'm not surprised lots of you are buying multiples as well but use this as a starting point if you want to use it as part of a collection or just half a meter you know that would make you might still have time to get it ready for Christmas if you haven't overextended yourself like I have um beautiful wash bag you know very simple or even just you know a really simple drawstring bag or a tote bag would look absolutely stunning in that at four ninety nine, you're not going to get it that price again. There we go. 
a man shirt. Can you imagine? That would look fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think John would look nice in that. So we'll have to get him someone to make him one. But yes, that would be a beautiful man shirt. It's gorgeous. It looks got nice selvage as well. Always loving the selvage. Look. Snow Leopard Designs. Silk Road by Snow Leopard Designs. Beautiful, isn't it? But I like the... um. Look at the colour blobs on the selvage. You see, now these are really useful if you want to colour match. Always have a look at the selvage because nearly always they put the colours on the selvages. Depends on the design of the fabric, but nearly always they do. So it's a really good way of choosing your colour palette looking along. So if you think, well, I want this to go with blue, you can see immediately there were, there were four blues, there were four pinks, four greens, and then there's a gold and a flesh and a black. So it's very easy to use that as your sort of colour inspiration when you want to mix and match with other fabrics. If you just want planes, you can match those against them. But nearly always the selvages do have the colours, not always, but um, if your fabric does, it's a really good way of colour matching. So that's the early bird. There's loads, loads of you have got them in your baskets. Please do remember to check out because even if it's in your basket, doesn't mean it's yours. Somebody else who checks out quicker than you will take it out of your basket. Um, you can check out as many times as you want, though. Don't worry. The PMP is three ninety five a day, but that lasts between now and midnight. So it doesn't matter how many times you check out. You won't be charged that PMP every single time. You will be just be charged it. Your um, basket will be closed at midnight, and then you will be charged the one that one lot of three ninety five at that stage. So if you want to check out later, that's fine. But it will go, if we have any left at midnight, it will go back up. So, but more than half of the stock is gone now and lots of you have it in baskets as well. So please remember to check out. Lots and lots and lots, says Elliot. Elliot is producing today. Morning, Elliot. And we've got Emma who's directing this morning. Hello, Emma. We should get them on air to say, yes, um, yes, it's Emma's last day with Elliot. And me. And me. She's going to go live in Devon. I know. She's like, she is escaping the rat race. Lucky Emma. So anyone who li lives in Brixham who wants um, to befriend Emma, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a mobile number. Could she come round for tea? Because she's, she's escaping, I know. And we're really going to miss her as well. It's really sad. Anyway, anyway, let's go back to what we're doing today. We have got this fantastic quilt. But should we have a look and see what's coming up? So... At eight o'clock, that'll be now, we have got this beautiful Moda Twinkling Blooms quilt kit, which is using um, the Sanctuary range of fabric from Three Sisters. Isn't that lovely? Lovely Kate took a photo of this on her bed for us so we could see what it looked like properly, not just hung on the wall. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And do you know what? It's really easy. I've gone through the instructions, read it all, know how to make it now, just need to persuade someone to give me the kit, but it is quite, quite an easy make. That's at eight o'clock. Nine o'clock, we've got the lovely Jules with us today, who is going to show us how to make this fantastic cat quilt. We have got a brand new, look at that. And it's massive. Look at the size of the, that cat. So that's on a, that is actually taken on the bed. Look at it. Very simple make again. We've got a brand new book today that's featuring all um, design, cat designs made into quilt and homeware. So we're going to be selling the book separately, as well as fabric bundles and kit to make quip the um, quilt in two different colourways. So Jules will be on with us then. So if you love cats and you love sewing, well, you obviously love sewing or you wouldn't be here, um, then we have wait, stay with us for nine o'clock to see what we've got there because it's gorgeous. And, and Jules is going to be showing you how to make the quilt, which is really easy for a massive quilt. Then at 10 o'clock, we've got fabulous fabrics. We've got loads of pre-cuts. We've got jelly rolls, design rolls, books, um, charm packs, all sorts, but really beautiful design of fabric. So you'll love that. If you've got an idea of something that you want to make and you want someone else to choose the colours and the fabrics, stay with me for 10. At 11 o'clock, Jules will be back with us to show us how to make the turtle trot quilt. So it comes from a book which is all um, small, quick, quick and easy sort of babies children makes. And she has made this beautiful quilt. It's, and she said it's really simple. It's mainly strip piecing, and then it's got these applique turtles on it. We've got it available in two different colourways. This is just one of them, and um, she'll be showing us how to make that at 11. So if you've got a baby or a toddler in the family you would like to make a quilt for, this is the hour for you. At 12 o'clock, it's Yarn Lane, and we've got Native Lighting in today. Now, we've only had 
native lighting on Yarn Lane once before. And um, obviously, native lighting come onto Sewing Street, but for Yarn Lane, it's really important, you know, especially at the moment, we're all sitting in the living room in the dim light, doing knitting and crochet. Yet last night, I was crocheting with beards, with beads. I really wish I'd had some decent native lighting because, like the one next to me, look at this one. Gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, I love this one. Does it work? Oh, look, it works as well. But this is just one example of what you've got. But we've actually got Claire on F today from Native Lighting, who's going to be talking us through the light, the different lights that she has, what you need, and um, what works. Now, what Annette Claire doesn't know about lighting is it worth knowing. So, if you've got any questions about lighting, or you're not sure what you need, what's the difference between the day night daylight light and the warm light, and what would suit you? Because everybody's needs are slightly different as concerned lighting as to where you where you're sitting, how you work. Um, if you have a look at the website, all the items are on stock there, but um, she will be with us at 12 o'clock. Now, let's have a quick quick squiz at the website. So, the easiest way to shop with us is if you go on to www.sewingstreet.com. If you then click on Watch Live, that's at the top bit, top middle, you will see everything that's coming up on the show today. Now, if you have a look, we have got, look, there's the early bird, because that's the only one we've done today. So pre-order, that is everything that is coming up today. So if you want to get ahead, because you know what it's like, all the popular stuff goes very quickly. Also, if you want to get ahead, buy the kit, get it done in your basket and checked out before the demo, brilliant way to do it. So if you click down, if you scroll down, that's everything. All you have to do is click on add to basket, then it's in your basket. Don't forget to check out. So look, there's... Oh, there's the book, there's that beautiful perfect patchwork book. Oh, I'm just gonna get my water. The perfect patchwork book. I'm sorry, I've just disappeared. I've just gone back to get my water. So I'm back now. There's the perfect patchwork book and the, the um quilt, the quilt that um Jules is making features on the front cover as well. So there's all the other items. Love that quilt that's coming up. So if you want to get ahead, there's all the pre-cuts. Love them. Some really nice designer ones that Elliot and I were going through this morning. Beautiful. Oh, and we've got some um, Beth Studley fabrics as well. Nice. Loads and loads of those. And we've got some books as well. Some inspiration for you of what to do with your pre-cuts. So I'll be going through those with you at 10 o'clock. So that's the easiest way to shop. Now, if you prefer to speak to a human being, we do have a um, call centre, which is UK based. In fact, just around the corner, UK based. Free phone, 0800 001 4433. Now, if, you've got, if you want to order using that number, you can. Or if you've got any questions <coughs> or any problems with your order or any issues, they're really helpful. They will be able to sort things out for you. Um, and the family run, family run call centre as well, just around the corner. So it's just it's simpler. Some people prefer to shop online. Some of you prefer to use a, a phone number and want to actually speak to someone because you need to ask some questions. And, and you know, sometimes it can get a bit complicated with all the different ordering issues when you with using split pay and different things like that. They will be able to help you. But shall we start off with the quilt? There it is behind me. Look at this. I stand this one side so you can see. How beautiful is that? Now, when you break it down and you look at it, it's just made up of blocks that are stars but they're sewn together diagonally which turns the stars on their sides it's absolutely stunning isn't it and it's all made from moda fabric the three sisters um range sanctuary range is what it's from and the best thing is is it all comes in the kit even the border and i love the way that you've got all these beautiful corals and pinks and then the border is this lovely sort of dark linen shade with the floor around it and the binding as well. So I'm going to open my kit, then you can have a look. So brilliant if you wanted to give it to someone as a gift and who would not like this, 149.99. Now this is a big quilt. It is 185 by 228 centimetres. So we're talking way big enough for a double bed. But if you want to give someone as a, as a present, comes in a beautiful box. But it's, um, it's just lovely when you open it up. It's, it is like buying yourself a gift. And remember, this is all Moda fabric, which speaks for itself in the quality. So <coughs> instructions first. We'll have a look at the instructions in a minute. So they're full instructions. We'll go through those. Let's have a look at the fabric first. And look at this. Each kit comes like this, all wrapped up in tissue paper. 
So I'm going to try very hard to unpack it neatly. And I like the way that the tissue paper coordinates with the quilt. These things are important. Not going to undo the sellotape gently. There we go. It's like opening your own present, isn't it? Ooh, ooh, ooh. All tied with ribbon. So I'm doing this very gently. This is our bet. If I had this at home, this is how I'd do it. It's like, it is like a gift, isn't it? Turn it off. There we go. Confusing things with the light. So undo the ribbon. And then all the fabrics that you need to make this are in here. So, and they're all cut to the right size. It's obviously not exactly, there's a little bit extra, but you've got um, beautiful spotty floral. But you know that you just so you've got you're not having to buy if you had to buy the fabric you'd need you'd have to sort of buy it by the half meter or the fat quarter more than you need but they've given you exactly the right strip which is used for some well, well yeah several of the stars one two three four five of the stars is using this one so it's exactly the the quantity you need which is the best thing about buying a kit is not only you get the instructions but you're getting the things you need and often when you see um, kits you see the fabrics and you can get sort of five of them but not the sixth one then we've got this beautiful coal fabric now this is all moda um oh i like that all moda fabrics adopt the pace of nature her sequence is patience that's nice so three sisters are three women who all design their range of fabrics and they design them for moda and they all have different elements of the way they come to. One of them is a traditional quilt and one of them is more modern. There they are. There's the three lovely ladies. Um, that's from a different, they have different collections all the time. That's the cranberries and cream fabric collection. But this one is the sanctuary collection. But those are the three sisters and they design beautiful fabrics. I mean, look at the colours in here. It's a beautiful pinky coral shade. And that is used for, which section is that? Oh, that star there. And that's, so those are the, that's used for the corner stars. Gorgeous. And the good thing that all of these fabrics come from the same collection is that you know that the colours all coordinate, but also the prints balance. So you've got some large scale prints and some smaller scale prints as well. Oh, you've got another piece of that one. That's in, so these must be cut as separate individual pieces for different parts. We've got a big piece of the pink spot because the pink spotty fabric. So this this fabric is all um, your normal quilting weight, 44 inch width, 100% cotton and beautiful. If you've ever used Moda fabric, you'll know it's very, very soft. Although it's quilting weight, it is beautifully soft and it presses and cuts really nicely. When you buy quality fabric, you know, well, you know, don't you? You notice the difference with the way that it cuts and it sews. So this, there's a lot of the pale pink because that is used for the whole of the background section. All amongst this, so that's what they stand out. So it's very soft, it's very vintage, isn't it? If you make this quilt, it will, it, it's very simple. We'll go through the instructions in a minute. But it really gives you that vintage, homemade, traditional quilting look. And the good thing about it is that it's very easy to quilt yourself. There are a lot of lines that if you just want to stitch in the ditch, you just go around the edge. There's a lot of lines for you to follow, so you haven't got to do all patterns if you don't want to. But if you're a bit more ambitious or you like freestyle quilting, I mean, they've done quilting along some of the lines on this one and then put some um, feather sections in some of the more open. But you don't have to do that. You could just either quilt along the lines or you could echo quilt around the edge of it. And I think that's great because sometimes, you know, with big quilts, you think, oh, I don't want, I don't want to do all that freestyle quilting. We don't want to do squirrels and stuff. There's a lot of lines to follow. So that's the background. We've got another beautiful soft pink rose design here. Loving that one. Look at that. That's beautiful. Now that one, <coughs> oh, that's used in some of the, the actual stars around the edge of the, um, the floral one. So it's quite interesting that the way it's made is that something like this floral one here, you've got the deeper coral that makes, that makes that stand out more. But whereas with this star that's got that same floral one, you've got this pale pink and, that, and, then it, and it actually makes the, um, the star look quite different. I'm just move the lamp. 
tripping into the lamp. There we go. And it actually makes the star look quite different because of the different fabric that's around the edge of it. But the, what's lovely is that the whole design has been chosen specifically to go with these fabrics, which is quite important, isn't it? Because I think that's often the thing is that you buy a collection of fabrics and you think, well, I love that quilt, but I don't really know whether those fabrics are going to be the right ones for them. But um, this has been designed specifically. I love the ticking stripe. Again, you know, in this fabric collection, you've got your large prints, you've got your small prints, and I love this. Rather than just putting a plane in the collection, they've put a beautiful, shall I hold it out so you can see? It's really fresh and clean and lovely, isn't it? Can't beat a ticking stripe for a quilt. It does, um, it does make it very traditional then. So, beautiful, isn't it? So that's that one. Then, then there's, um, we've gone into the sort of the natural linen background colour, which is sort of your deep, deep brownie colour, floral. This one is gorgeous. Listen, now, this is used for all the central stars. And see, and it's lovely, isn't it, how you've got the sort of centre section and the outers. And, they, and those stars are running all the way around the central square section. And doesn't it go really well with the background colour? Because you can see if, well, you can see when I put them on the desk, those two, they go together beautifully. Now, because they're in the same fabric collection, the hue and the shade and the tone of the fabrics are the same, which is really important because they all hang together. That's why you need to get these, that's why these design, they employ designers because they know what they're doing. But isn't that, that's like a vintage tea dress, isn't it? I absolutely love that one. Really big piece of that. So you can see, I mean, I still haven't finished. We have got loads and loads of fabric in this kit. And I think it works really well, the way that they've placed the stars as well. At the centre section, you've got the same stars. And then you've got these, this pale vintage one running around the, that section. And then you've got alternating small and large florals going all the way around the outer border. And then they've used the same dark coral stars in the corners. It really... Um, it flows together. But I mean, this is, you know, that's double bed, beautiful double bed quilt. So if you're thinking, if you think I've always wanted to make a Moda quilt, this is your time to do it. Because all the hard work, the choice of colours, the design, the placement and the simple quilting has already all been worked out for you. Right. And it's... Mm, there's a, a look, I'm still going. I love this dark coral. But what I love about this one is that you'd think it would be a plain, wouldn't you? That's the fabric that goes all the way around these borders. But it isn't. It's got like a, um, a fine leaf. If you look very closely, look, you can see it's got the fine leaf. Now, what's great about this is it gives the quilt texture. It makes it flow. It gives it that sort of 3D depth appearance. Whereas if it was just a plain fabric, it's quite blocky. But when you have um, this, rather than putting a plane in, by having this slight movement to it, it gives you more depth to your quilt. And I just think 149.99 for this kit is an amazing price. If you would rather, we do, we we can offer it to you on split pay as well. If if you haven't done that with us before, the way it works is that in order to spread the payments, we split it. Depending on how much it is, is whether it's in two or three. With this one, it's in three payments, or five sometimes. Depends on the, the price. But this is in three payments. But it's interest-free. So we don't charge you any more for going for split pay. What happens is, if you want to do that, you pay, but you can choose. You don't have to buy on split pay. You can do one um, payment now of 149.99. Or, if you want to do split pay, you pay 49.99 now. The quilt kit is sent to you straight away. Then the other two payments come out next in January and then in February. It's just a way of you being able to spread the payments, but it doesn't actually cost you any more to do it. And you don't have to wait for three months to get the kit because that would be very annoying, wouldn't it? So that, look at that. And there's loads of this one. Let me open it up. Loads. I don't know why. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know whether there's any, I couldn't say for definite whether there will be. I'm sure there will be. Some left. Look at the size of that piece. Massive, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I should have a special stool to stand on when I'm holding up fabric because um, 
I have to cover my face because I can't see it. I need a special st a special stool, a holding fabric up stool. Oh yeah, mini step ladders. Well, I'm still going. I'm still going. Then we've got this other gorgeous. Now this is the small floor. So this is the smaller version of. Let me show you the big floral. So the big floral that I showed you. So um, the way that this, this one goes is that you've got the big floral in these stars and it alternates with the small floral. So it balances beautifully. So look, if you look at these two together, it's the same flower. Obviously this one's got the spotty background, but it's exactly the same flower, but just in the different scales. And that's what Moda does so well in its fabric collections. It chooses a it often chooses a premium. Obviously they have di lots of different designers who work for them, but they often choose different scales. So you've got large scale print, smaller scale print, same colorway, same print. So it all hangs together and just gives you that beautiful match quality so that when you've made your quilt, it makes you look like a genius. I mean, I, th I think I would struggle, if I had the quilt design, I think I'd struggle to put that collection together and know what balance is. I'd end up, I think, having all the stars the same colour all the way around. But knowing that these balance, and, and obviously the, when it's been designed, whoever's designed it has worked all of that out. Then the final fabric, and I love this one, because I think it really complements the others. So it's exactly the same print as this large one that's used in the stars, but with this lovely sort of very, like a dark linen milk chocolate colour background. But the two go together beautifully, don't they? They really, and I think the fact that they've chosen it, it's not featured in the stars at all. It's in the four borders that go all the way around the edge and it frames the quilt. Using that darker fabric just frames the quilt, but because it has the same spotty background as the pale um, flower print, then it all hangs together really well. Also, the, the brown shade of it is the same tonal value as the others, so it just works together. And anyway, that piece is used for the, f the borders. It's gorgeous. I think that's actually my favourite one, but it gives it that vintage traditional quality, and it is, isn't it? It's a it's it stars. I mean, it's a very, very traditional quilt design, but it's using these vintage style fabrics. So those are all the fabrics. You've got loads here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, those are the same colour, so we'll put them together. Seven, eight, nine. It's fab, isn't it? So that's just the fabric. Instructions are quite important as well. So that's all on here, Explain, gives you the finished quilt size, tells you exactly how to make it. Now what I love about the instructions is that um, they give you pictures of the fabrics, which is really useful, isn't it? The um, ticking, I've just worked out where that's used, that I showed you earlier, this ticking stripe is used for the binding, which is lovely, isn't it? I think it works really well on the binding. On the quilt that's behind me, they've used a different print for the binding, but if you go through the instructions, this beautiful ticking stripe is used for the binding, which I think is lovely. It always works nicely when you put a little bit of a stripe round, round the edge. So they've got pictures, so it's really easy to see. So what I would do when you get this home is I would label each of them. I'd cut a small piece out of them and then label them so that you know immediately which, I mean, luckily the fabrics are all quite different, but also what they've done as well is the two fabrics, F and H, are the same print, but they're different size pieces. But it tells you in the instructions how big they are, so that when you're cutting out, so like the F is 25 centimetres and the H is 45, so you know exactly which is which. It just takes the mystery out, because you know sometimes when you look at quilt instructions, you think, I've no idea. So they go, D is multicolour. Well, if you haven't got the picture of it, how on earth would you know that? You spend ages trying to identify it. Now, what you don't get in the kit is the backing fabric and the wadding. I mean, which is obviously most, you rarely get those in because it depends what you're getting, what you need. So if you're, for the backing fabric, you'd need 520 centimetres if you're buying the normal 44 inch width. But obviously, um, I've got some backing fabrics, so I'll show that to you in a minute, that we've selected that we'll go with this. But obviously, some of you prefer to use maybe um, extra wide fabric, or you use a, sh a sheet, or all that sort of thing. So that's why the backing and the wadding isn't in there. If you want um, 
Oh yes, yeah, so if you were buying extra wide fabric, you need 220 centimetres. So they give you those two options and you'll need um, wadding. Oh, we've got some wadding. Is that the right size? Let me just go and get that. That's a lovely size. 228 by 274. That's exactly. That's what, yeah, that's per that's the perfect size. So the wadding that we have here is um is what size? Yeah, I was just trying to think whether it says well, yeah, it's queen size. That's exactly the right size. Now this is gorgeous because this is your 80-20 wadding which means it's 80% cotton, 20% polyester. This is perfect for this. It's a beautiful wadding to use. I, it's my favorite wadding 80-20 for quilting because it's really easy to quilt. It's, it feels quite thin when you're quilting through it, very easy to quilt through, but it gives the quilt just the weight and the substance without being too puffy. But what's lovely is that once you've quilted it, if you pop it in the washing machine on a cold water, I don't mean cool, I mean cold water wash, it shrinks slightly, just so slightly enough that it pulls the stitches together a bit and gives your quilt that handmade look. After that, it won't shrink again, but it's just the once. And it does give all the instructions on here how to do it. But remember, I mean, the first time I did it, I sat in front of the washing machine with my fingers crossed thinking, oh no, I spent hours and hours quilting this, what's going to happen? And I set it to cold and worked it well. You know, I waited for a nice day so I could dry it outside. And it came out and it was beautiful because it just gives your quilt that real hand almost hand quilted quality so if you want this wadding it really is worth it 44.99 and it is exactly it's the size that you need for this it is um it, it, well it's it's actually a little bit more because this is 228 by 274 and you need um 210 by 255 so there's more than enough here but it is this, obviously use the wadding that you prefer to use you can tack it together you can spray baste it you can do what you, you know and other people prefer to use iron on or polyester but i think that when you have spent time making a quilt like this it's worth using a decent wadding and the 8020 um is beautiful as well so that's the um the wadding that you'll need if you need it 44.99 But even um, if you buy the wadding and, and the quilt together, that's still under £200, which is amazing for a beautiful double bed size quilt like this. Using, remember, it's mode of fabric. This is designer fabric. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? And then when you go through, it's really simple to make because basically the star blocks are all made in the same way, just using different fabrics. And interestingly, because a lot of people I know, because know, it's using... Um, you know, squares and triangles. Don't like to do the half square triangles where they're cutting and piecing and sewing. So with this, it's been kept very simple. So if you're new to quilt making, if you've used a sewing machine, you would like to have a go at a quilt. You're not really sure about all these sort of complicated quilting methods. It's, you cut, it shows you all the cutting first. And it's told you as well, this is for the best use of fabric, that you cut everything to the full width of fabric. W-O-F means woof means width of fabric and that means cut from one selvage to the other the width of the fabric and you cut all your fabric into strips first then you cut it into squares so that makes it quite simple so you can sort of think right well I'll get it all out today and I'll label my fabrics right now I'm going to cut it once you cut it don't forget to label which is which after that you then cut them into triangles and then you sew them back together to form the stars so it's very manageable you can think you think, well, I tell you what, I'm going to, oh, so there are lots, lots, this is a limited number. We haven't, how many of these kits have we got? I don't know, not loads. And there are lots and lots of you with them in baskets. I mean, I'm thinking this is what I'd make over Christmas. So we have, we are got, we're in the teens now of stock left. Once Christmas is done, mm. or you have a bit of quiet time, Break, yeah, in that in between, the tween bit between Christmas and New Year, where for the only time days don't have not days, they have dates. You know it's the 28th of December, but you have no idea whether it's a Tuesday or a Sunday. The rest of the year, you know it's a Tuesday, but you've no idea what the date is, but that bit in between. But you can break it down. So think, right, I'm going to label my quilt. Now, today, I'm going to cut out the fabric and then put it all to one side. Right, tomorrow, I'm now going to make a star. And then, once you've made all the stars, it's quite clever, because when you look at this, you think, well, all of these stars on my instructions are square. 
but on my quilt they're turned round but it shows you there's a nice full um, scale picture of here all of those squares are then turned and they're joined diagonally so and that's what creates that sort of um, it, so you're, there's no angles involved the triangles are created by cutting squares and cutting across them diagonally so there's nothing complicated here it really is about sewing two triangles together to make a square and then because they're then joined so here's your square can you see on let me which one I'm looking at this is your square that you make but because they're joined end to end like this that's what creates that look and then to fill in the gap again that's a square cut in half to make a triangle and the other part the other half of it is used at the bottom and then you've got the square here I can never see without looking whether you can see um, the other half of that square that's cutting the triangle is used on that side and it's exactly the same with the whole quilt so <laughs> it's really hard I can't see what you can see unless I turn around but you but you can see how it's all mirror imaged like that um, and then it's up to you how you quilt it I was saying if you're new to quilting and you think oh, well I can't do that because I've never quilted you can just once you've got them all together what i would do is get your backing fabric lay it give it a good press lay it on a table or on the floor depending what space you've got then then put the wadding on top then press your quilt top really well and lay that on top and then you can pin it together oh message morning sewing street team love this kit but frightened about quilting it after why don't you do a demonstration on finished quilting from mandy in Staffordshire, it's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, I feel a bit like that because I haven't got, I've got a beautiful sewing machine, but I haven't got one of these big quilting machines, the ones with the really deep throats, but I would be able to do that on mine. And honestly, I would tack it all together or spray baste it. That's the easiest thing. But if you, even with that, if you don't lay it all down and then honestly, just put it under your sewing machine and sew along the lines. Just sew round the edge of the stars. Or if you're really worried about being able to sew straight and it being exactly in the seam, then when you're sewing, line up the edge of your foot with the edge of one of the stars and then um, quilt just outside it. Then it doesn't matter if you're not exactly straight. That's called echo quilting. I, would, I wouldn't do anything more complicated than that. Or if you wanted to quilt, because some of these lines have gone through diagonally through the middle, Use masking tape to put the lines and sew along the edge of the masking tape or use a heat erasable pen. That's what I do. I always test it first, but on motor fabrics, you should be fine. Always test it first, but I draw the lines all over my quilt and just sew along them. It's really simple. Once the whole thing is quilted, all you have to do is trim the backing and the wadding to match up with the front and then bind it. Really simple. So please do check out your baskets it's 149.99 which is an amazing price i mean it's a massive quilt it's full double bed size it's moda fabric you've got all this big stack of beautiful select fabric that's been specifically selected i mean do you know even if you don't want to make the quilt get it for the fabric because it's gorgeous gorgeous and do you know what once you've got the quilt and you've got the instructions you can make another one from your own fabric. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous. And I think it really is that step for somebody who's done a bit of home sewing or a bit of dressmaking thinks, I'd love to make a quilt. This is really easy. Now, if you want to buy backing fabric, we've chosen two for you. So this one, see that's it would make a lovely backing. Now you will need five and a half meters of this because it's not your extra wide, as this is normal quilting width fabric. You will need five and a half metres of this fabric to back the quilt. I mean, you can use it for anything. It's 6 99 for half a metre, but as you can see, we've chosen it specifically because it goes really well. 6 99 not bad, is it? But it goes, oh, are we going to lower it? Oh, no way. 2.99 that's amazing and you need five well you need, it says 520 centimeters let me just double check yeah so you will need five and a half meters to back that which is 11 units so you need to put 11 in your basket 2.99 a meter that's amazing 
And look, isn't that beautiful? But we have another one as well, so you can choose. If you want, if you're thinking, um, I want to back my quilt, but I don't know what fabric, there's this one as well. Now, I like this one. I think I like it because it's a spot. Hannah, Bas Hannah Basic. Good job Hannah's not producing today, isn't it? Hannah Basic polka dots cream fabric. But it, again, you can see how well it coordinates with this. Now, the brilliant thing about these two fabrics is they are non-directional. So, when you're quilting, I find... Oh, are we going to lower the price on this one? So, this was $6.99 for half a metre, but it's 2 dollars because when you're quilt, if you haven't quilted before, one fine thing I find very difficult is I put my backing fabric down, I put my wadding on, put my quilt top on top. Now I can't see my backing fabric, so I don't know if it's perfectly straight. I can have a little look underneath and sort of straighten it up, but I'm not absolutely sure. So I always go for a fabric that if you've not got it 100% straight on the back, doesn't matter. And both of these fabrics will do it. So for 2 99 remember, you will need 11 units because five and a half metres to back this quilt. Obviously, you can buy it for anything. It's not limited to people who bought the quilt kit. Anyone can have this. 2 99 for quilting weight, 44 inch width. Quilting weight cotton fabric. I mean, that's fantastic price, isn't it? And that'll go up again at midnight if we've got any left. So we've got a whole kit for you, haven't we? We've got the kit, we've got the wadding, we've got the backing fabric. Do you need some tools? Because you will need tools to make this. Now you really will need, um, pl yes, please do, there are loads of you. We have got lots of you with these in your basket, so please check out. We have made sure we've got a good quantity of this um, fabric that we've suggested for backing because you need five and a half metres of it. But it is going because it's two ninety nine, and we don't normally sell this quality of fabric. Only if we're having a clearance sale, but we don't normally sell fabric like this at two ninety nine. And again, as I say, at midnight it will go back up again. So you really do need to be able to make the quilt. You could do it with a ruler, pencil, and a pair of scissors. But because you but because you've got to cut fabric into strips, squares, and then triangles, you could do it with a ruler and a pair of scissors. Um, but it, we would suggest, really, you need the rotary cutting system. So we've got a selection of rotary cutters for you. Depends what you fancy. Quite like this one because it's pretty. So there are different sizes. If you've not done rotary cutting before, rotary cutters come in three different sizes, 28 mil, 45 mil and 60 mil. Um, the 28 and the 60 are used for sort of cutting small pieces or big pieces. This is your general size. This is your basic size that is used for about 80% of your cutting. Um, the other two are specialists. So it's 45 mil, which means that any 45 mil blade when you need to replace it will fit. It's Fiskars, really well known brand. We know it's we we know it's um, a good quality. They also make sharpness so you can sharpen the blade. But I like this one because it's pretty. I have a whole collection of rotary cutters and I keep some specially for paper and then I'm not very good at remembering to change the blades so I use them for different things <coughs> and um, I have some that I use for cutting thicker fabrics like fleeces so I keep those always really sharp. Just different ones for different things but I love this one. So if you haven't got a rotary cutter then this is ideal. There's the Fiskars one. This is your sort of your basic one. We've got the clover one, which is more ergon ergonomic. Can you say that? Because it fits really, really well in your hand, whether you're holding it upright or at or an angle. This one is twelve ninety nine. Just depends what sort of. To be honest, the blade is the same. It'll cut in the same way. It's all to do with the handle and the style. A bit like if you're using a crochet hook. You know, it's a, or knitting needles, or it's, it's all to do with what you prefer to hold, but they do the same job. But we've also got the Fiskars Pivoting Rotary Cutter, which is better because you can get it sort of, it's more flexible to get it round corn, round edges and curves. And some people prefer the hold of it because you can change the angle that you hold it at, so it can, you can turn it round. Oh, review. Much better than I expected. Comfortable to use. Less strain on my wrist when cutting large amounts of fabric. So because you, so because you can angle it to exactly where you want your hands, so you don't have to have it high or low. You can um, angle it to suit you. A lot of people prefer these. That one is twenty one ninety nine. So you will need a rotary cutter. 
you just need to choose which one. You will also need a ruler. Got rulers. Now, for cutting, let me get the one I need to start with. If you haven't got any rotary cutters, when you're cutting the fabric into strips, you have to cut it across the full width of fabric. So what you do, here's the ruler. Um, you get your fabric, full width of fabric. I'm not going to do it because I've got a cutting mat on here. Right? Take your fabric and fold it in half so that the selvages meet. The coat, yes. So fold your fabric in half so the selvage is beat. Now you'll find when you get fabric, there'll already be a crease down the middle. And I'd keep it to that, to be honest, because selvages aren't always 100% straight, just because of the way that they are sort of pinned to the machine when it's printed. So not, it's probably best not always to match up the selvages exactly. I'd go with that centre crease. Give it a good press, then put it on your cutting mat like this. So you've got the selvages on the left. This is for people who are left-handed. Do it the other way if you're... Uh, these are people who are right-handed. Turn it the other way if you're left-handed. Make sure you've got a cutting mat underneath, obviously. Do not cut on anything except for cutting mat. We have got lots of cutting mats on the Sewing Street website. Just go on to sewingstreet.com, put cutting mat into the search box, and it will give you all the different ones that we have. We do have, oh yes, we do have my favourite. If you want, if you want the cutting mat that I want, this is the biggest cutting mat that we sell. It's 169.99. It is massive. It's bigger than our desk. So if you have your own dedicated sewing space and you've got a big table, I really want this cutting mat. It, honestly, it just covers the whole table. You can cut full widths of, it's just beautiful. So if you want a really big cutting mat, that's amazing. And um, it's made by Horn, who make beautiful sewing furniture, and it gets sent direct from them. It's a, I mean, that is not the only one. We obviously do smaller ones as well. If you haven't ever done rotary cutting before, don't think, oh, God, I've got to buy that. You don't. You don't have to buy one that big. It's just beautiful. S and that one has split pay. So when you're cutting your fabric, back to that, top tip, put your fabric like this. Now, on your cutting mat, line up the bottom, the, the selvage in the bottom so it's nice and straight and then this is why you need this big ruler because we, you've got to start off with cutting your fabric across the width into strips so as you can see this ruler is longer than the half full width now if you've pressed it and you've got the crease and everything then you know that it's all nice and flat F start off by cutting off just a small strip because you don't want any selvage in your cutting so I normally cut about an inch off the edge because if you've got selvages, it's all a bit wibbly. Once you've cut that off and it's nice and straight, you can, you can then, I'll pretend that's been cut off because I don't want to do that here. And say you had to cut off three inch strips. All you do is then line up the three inch mark across um, the cut edge and then you just cut with your rotary cutter along there. There's your three inch strip. And then move it along, cut off the next one. So that's why you need the long one like this, because you can cut into strips. From there, you've then got to cut them into, um, into squares, and you need to cut squares into triangles. So you can use this big ruler for that, nothing to stop you at all. But obviously, you know, when you're cutting something, a smaller strip into big ones, it's easier, it, less will, if you've got a smaller um, cut, a cutting one. So say you wanted to cut squares across the diagonal, then we have the small square one that ends in 92 so the six and a half inch square is really good for cutting squares into triangles 14.99 then i mean we do have lots of others i would say if i was going to buy three of them i would have the big long strip i'd have that and then the big square that's just that's a 12 and a half inch square now these are all creative grids rulers and the reason that we choose these and we love these is because they have the really good grip. So on the back, if you look, you've got slightly textured section that goes all the way around the edge and blobs all over it. Because when you're holding this flat on the fabric with your hand and you've got your rotary cutter, you don't want that to slip. You want it to stay still. It's really, really important. So it means that you can cut. Also, the creative grids rulers have loads of markings on them. 
So you've got all the inch markings, you've got them in eighth of an inch increments, you've got the angles, it just makes it easier. Every single ruler as well has a QR code, which if you hold the if you turn your phone onto camera and hold it over there, it links it to their website and shows you how to use it. So on the website, you'll see we have lots and lots of different sizes. I would always recommend getting the full cut across the full width of fabric, but also a, re a square one like this, because it's just a bit easy. You can turn it round. It's, sim it's easier to um, manipulate once you're cutting strips into smaller things. And then you need a cutting mat. Have a look on the website because we've got lots of different sizes of cutting mats. Have a look on there to choose the one you want. So if you've never done quilt making before, you've done sewing, you'd like to have a go, then it really is worth having that equipment. So those are the, the three rotary cutters. Let me put the fabric away. And the cutting mats. Oh, and my kit. Um, right, clips clips clip oh no let's i will do um erasable pens first so any of you who are a little bit worried about quilting and marking and worried about being in a straight line um we have got erasable pens in two colors here this one ends in 49 and it's brown basically oh blue the blue one do you know what? It doesn't really matter what colour you have. It's just it needs to show up on your fabric. And the blue or the brown will show. These. This is the broad nib, which is what I would suggest for marking quilts with. The best thing about them is they're heat erasable. Amazing. You can draw all over your fabric. I won't draw on the quilt. Okay, I might be in trouble, but I will draw on this. You can draw all over your fabric. So say you wanted to draw some lines across your fabric. Well, that one's even got... Oh, no, it hasn't. So if I was going to draw some quilting lines on my fabric, just draw like that. I mean, that's a really nice line to be able to draw along. If you think, well, actually, I'd like to also draw a line at a 45 degree angle, you can, um, you can line up your 45 degree angle. You can draw that. There we go. Yeah, you can't have this now. This is my piece. Um, Maybe you wanted to draw some circles. You know, if you wanted to draw circles, well, I would suggest you don't just draw your own circle. I did some circular quilting recently and I just drew around a plate all over it. Um, then, you'll have to give me two seconds for my iron to heat up. It won't take long. Um, these will actually amazingly erase, well, they erase through friction or heat. So you can actually use the end of it. If you rub the end of it, then they erase. Look at that. But they raise with heat. This is the best thing. Always test them. Please always test them. But when you um, when you quilt, this is the easiest way to do it. Draw all over your quilt, and then honestly, the joy of having finished the quilting, and then you get your iron out. The joy, and you just go like that. Da da da. That's amazing, isn't it? Um, so I. When you're marking, oh, let's do the brown one next. When you're marking quilting, I would suggest the broad nib like this. Now, I get through so many of these. I use them for marking hems, marking seam allowances. You know, and say you want to do quilting in half-inch increments, just use your, your ruler every half an inch, draw your line. And look, so I've got three beautiful, and you see them in brown, well, I can see them. Three beautiful parallel lines, half an inch apart, using my ruler. And then quilt along them. Quick press, gone. Obviously, so they could be used for, for any, um, any quilt marking or fabric marking at all. So they are one of my go-to things. One or two more options. Um, well, if you've got, oh my gosh, do you see how many allowed to have two? That's really difficult, isn't it? Um, thread, really important. Thread is really important. We had this on air the other day and I loved it, so I'm going to go with this. Oh, this one's sealed. So, we haven't got time. 49.99 and this is the most fantastic value for money there are 27 spools of gutterman thread in look if i just turn them around in all these different colors now this thread this is my go-to thread that i use for general seaming 
um, dressmaking, home sewing. I uh, might use a more specialist thread for quilting, but I use this for my general sewing and I pay normally about £192 for one spool. But they also come in a box. Now you've got 27 spools in there, so that would be £54 if you were paying full price for them. Plus you've got the storage box that goes with it as well. So to have the full selection of all the colours, I think there's like five shades of green, five shades of pink. You've got blacks, greys, beiges, whites, ivories, all sorts of colours and your neutrals. That is a fantastic prize. So to go with your quilt, absolutely perfect. Then you can quilt in different colours. Once you've got your you've got your heat erasable pens, honestly, do not be afraid of quilting a quilt. I know a lot of people think, oh, I don't know how to quilt it, but don't be afraid of that. Um, if you've bought lots of rulers, you need to store them. Otherwise, you have them all over lying on the table like I do. These um, are, be made, are made specially for storing your rulers in. They have little grooves in them. Have we got one open? I don't know where though. So they have little grooves in them and you can store all your rulers in them. Look at that. If you love a bit of storage like I do, isn't that great? Where else, how else do you store these? Look at that. So if you have a collection of, um, of rulers, which I do, and I don't have one of these, so mine just live all on top of my cutting mat because I've got um, Dresden plate ones because the Creative Grids you can buy in all different shapes and sizes. I've got a Dresden plate cutter, I've got a big one along, and I, and I just keep them on my cutting mat. But they're always in my way. I have to pick them all up and put them somewhere else before I do any cutting. But this, look, for the size, this is fantastic economical story. Um, the mill, they're Millwood, so really well known, really good brand, Beechwood, and you can, there's five slots. So you can get five rulers, well, you can get more than five rulers because you can get the smaller ones, you can get two in. You can even put the big one in. Either way, you could put it up there, or if you felt that was maybe a little too high, you could put it that way. But a really good way, so I have one of those lovely um, rotating scissor racks. Don't know if we do those anymore, the beechwood ones where you can put loads of scissors in, I love that. Have we run out of time? Loads, loads. Have a look on the website. All of these things will go onto Sewing Street. Click on Watch Live and all of the items I've talked about are there. Now, there are a lot of you who have, have this quilt kit in their basket. Please do check out. We haven't got that many left. We've only got just over 10 left. If you want one of the quilt kits or you want to give it to a friend or you want to make it yourself, this is a fantastic price for Moda fabric 149.99 full double by bed size quilt and honestly if this is the first quilt you've made this is a good way to start right so i will see you back here in a couple of minutes um jules is on with the cats so she's going to show you how to make gorgeous cat quilt which we've got available in two different colorways i will see you back here in just a couple of minutes time Hi, I'm Lisa Lamb. I'm the quiet one from the Sewed Property Girls. I just wanted to wish you a safe, warm and wonderful Christmas with your loved ones. I hope Santa brings you loads and loads of crafty goodies and I look forward to being back on the show in 2022. Take care everyone. Love you loads. Bye. Mwah. Hello there, it's Mark Francis here and I've just popped up to wish a very Merry Christmas to all of you, our Sewing Street family. And uh, by the way, Happy Easter. Really long show this, really long. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out.
If you're a sewing street or yarn lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hi everyone, my name is Jules Mayouf and I'm really excited to be a guest designer on Sewing Street. It's combining two of my favourite things which are sewing and designing. Uh, I live in London at the moment but I'm originally from Staffordshire uh, so I think I've got a combination of two really great things so London's really diverse and um, lots of different cultural impacts and then Staffordshire is very rural so there's a lot of country influence in what I do. My grandma first taught me to sew when I was in my early teens. She was a dressmaker and she was always sewing and taking in orders from different people. Um, and I think I got my initial love of sewing from her. Um, I started making my clothes uh, because I couldn't find anything that was fashionable. So I created my own fashion. A um, bit dubious at times probably. I remember once I um, bought some really lovely, as I thought, heavy brocade material. I created a pencil skirt, thought I was fabulous. It turned out to be curtaining uh, and I got quite a lot of stick from that. But uh, you know, in my defense, I was a new romantic and I, I think I was just fashion forward. Um, I have done a lot of um, teaching and coaching and mentoring uh, in sewing in my career. Um, and I would think that probably the best tip that I can give to people, because um, all age groups have various challenges, but the best tip is to be kind and good to yourself and don't worry about if you make mistakes because you've always got your seam ripper to hand. I'm really looking forward to my shows with Sewing Street and helping you have some hints and tips and knowledge. So I look forward to seeing you soon. I just wanted to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Where's this year gone? Who knew it would go so fast? But I'm just looking forward to spending some time with you over the Christmas period. And what did you get for Christmas? Fabric? Wool? Why not? Well, I hope whatever you got you enjoy and I can't wait to spend the new year bringing you lots of patterns and kits and continuing our sewing journey together. Bye for now. Hello, it's Fiona from Sew Girl here. I just want to wish all the viewers and everybody at Sewing Street a very happy Christmas. And I look forward to seeing you all in the new year. So I hope you have a very merry, fun time with your friends and family. And see you next year. Bye bye. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. 
Yarn Lane is on from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Hello and welcome back to Sewing Street. So this hour is all about sewing and caps. And if you love both, you're going to love this hour. We have a look at that quilt. That is the quilt that Jules has made from us from this new book. And we've got two kits to make it. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's massive. I absolutely love it. It's so lovely. It features on the cover of the book. Perfect patchwork. 16 applique embroidery and quilt projects for modern cat people. Not, tra not traditional modern cat people. Or modern cat. I don't know. <laughs> love that. Isn't that great? I mean, it's, it doesn't have to be a bed quilt. That could be a wall hanging, couldn't it? absolutely love that so let's have a look go through the book this this is brand new on air we have not ever had this before and we've got 16 projects it's absolutely gorgeous and what's lovely is that they cater for different abilities and also techniques as well so we've got the basic techniques which is great isn't it very you can see very clear easy to understand instructions like making half square triangles um how to snowball the edges of things, how to do pressing, all of the information you need, even about having a hand embroidery. You've got all the stitch guides for the hand embroidery. So that's all the information you need there, which is lovely because there is a little bit of foundation piecing in here. They've got that. How to do raw edge applique. So there's everything. There's all techniques from hand embroidery to machine sewing to FPP. Um, how to create special finishes making bindings very important then you've got how to choose materials which is really great isn't it because there's lots of different sorts of materials and textures of materials used in this book there's a lot of advice on that and embellishing so it really does cover everything even things like how to label your quilt which a lot of people forget when you spend hours making a quilt must label it and there's whole two pages on that so then we move into the projects this is really cute his his makeup bag that's really sweet isn't it so it's just a little pouch very very simple if you want to make just a little cat project little pouch with cat ears and whiskers but look at the instructions and how easy they are it's been made very simple step by step you've got lovely clear photographs of each step of how to make them and then when you move on to the purse it shows you all all of it in detail so you've got a bit of hand embroidery here a bit of machine sewing as well and the full size template so no need to enlarge them and this pouch is great because it's got that clear pvc in it as well uh, then we've got a little cat bag which you could use as a wristlet or you could put a chain on and use it over the shoulder but it's very simple, isn't it? It's just pieced squares made into a little cat shape. There, look, there's a better picture of it there. You can even put it on the put it on a lanyard with a zip across it. So very, very quick and simple cat project. Love the cat tote. Reusing some old denim and the pocket off a pair of old jeans. But just look, a little cat peeking out. Nice tote though, isn't it? Because it's got a nice box bottom. It's quite a solid tote. It's not even really simple, but that's really lovely. And I love the um, upcycling element of it. I collect old jeans. I've got stacks of them. And I use them for things like keeping these pockets and using for bases of things. But it's nice to have a bit of upcycling. This is the sort of project that you can make using your stash. If you've got a few um, bits of denim and a pocket and there, and, you know, little scraps of fabric. So this book, 16.99 and 16 projects just over a pound a project, which is an amazing value because what would you normally pay for a set of instructions to make a tote bag with the templates? More than a pound. And the instructions are really clear. We're going to be going to go through the cat quilt instructions with Jules in a bit, so we'll ask her how she's find them. But when I've gone through the book, I can see it. It looks very clear, very easy to understand. Lots and lots of walkthrough photos so you can see loads you know they haven't everything has been covered in detail here they haven't let anything out and then you've got the templates you know even this section where it's showing you how to put the magnetic clasp it's all very very detailed um a tale of two kitties needlework that's great isn't it 
does look that's so sweet isn't it but you know these designs you can use for other things as well so if you like the idea of doing the design and the flying geese you can use that technique for something else so that's that project that's not i like this project as well because look you've got um it's like a little book and you've got spaces to put pens and needles you've got a zip pocket that you can see through for putting your threads in really handy little needle book but also for projects you can just pop in your handbag or if you're using it for traveling you can pop it in there oh i've missed a page because this is really lovely isn't it that you can just use one of these screw top stabby tabby that's brilliant isn't it so if you've got these little screw top jars it's how to turn one of those into a little cat pin cushion it's really lovely isn't it so very simple again real scrap buster project you can use all your little scraps of fabric with the put ears on them and organize all of your storage i've got loads of these jars mine haven't got ears on i've got fabric tops with buttons safety pins fabric clips all sorts of things very useful but again full size templates um love the table runner little cats and flowers and a nice checkered border and obviously with projects like this you can make it to fit your table or you could use it on the end of the bed you know where the cat sits and always makes gives you lots of fluff on the end of your duvet? You could have that as the, the cat rug for your end of your bed. But anyway, you can see it a bit better there, in better detail. It's really pretty, isn't it? It's using the um, twisted tails patchwork print design where you've got two cats and their tails are twisted around each other. It's really clever. And there's all the pieces. Then we've got the, um, the pillow, the just kitting around pillow. Isn't that sweet? So it's one of those lovely sort of like a Dresden pillow where you've just got all the segments joined together and they put a button for the nose in the centre and then buttons for the eyes and then it's got ears. Really simple project. But again, scrap buster because you only need small pieces for each of them. And really lovely clear photos of the whole thing and templates. But look, isn't that gorgeous? Lovely thing to have on your bed. I mean, they've used some, you know, the prints that you've used there, you can use them to sort of mix and match with your own surroundings. Pillows. This is just a plea case. So you've got this really fun cat. I love that. Quite a modern, modern art look. And then you've got flowers all appliqued on as well. It's gorgeous, isn't it? $16.99. I'm still going. Look, everything is... If you look at it, it gives you all the detail for the placement of where you put all the designs and the embroidery. More templates, more templates. I love the cat. The self-portrait pillow. Isn't that really sweet? You could have that in your living room looking out. But it's nice that they put the, some patchwork onto the cat as well. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? So it's the sort of thing be lovely to put a child to have as a toy, but equally to put on the bed or the sofa. It's quite a nice decoration, nice cushion. There you've got all of the templates. Love this quilt, Blooming Curiosity quilt. So you've got some very simple square and rectangle piecing around the edge and just nice pieced flowers and cat in the centre as well. Um, and then we've got, I'm just going to show you the other quilts and then we'll move on to the bundle, the Feline Floral Quilt. Um, love that one. Whisker Away Quilt, so there's a whole quilt section at the back. And we're going to get in a minute to the quilt that we're going to make. Well, we, Jules, is going to make. <laughs> Nether quilt. So much in here, but this is the one that Jules is going to be making today. The laser cat quilt. It's huge, absolutely huge. All the instructions you need are in here. And then the final one, the Chase and Dream. So there is a lot in this book for 16 99 Now, we have got a choice of two bundles to make this quilt. We've got the blues and the brights, which is similar to the one on the cover and is the one that Jules has got behind her. Now, in this kit, it's amazing what you get in here. You have got one, two, three, four, five shades of blue fabric. You have got a meter, I think, of all of those. So you've got five meters of blue. That's for doing all the background. And then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fat quarters to do all the um, the cat. So you've got yellow, green, orange, red, pink, purple, blue, and then you've got white and black for the eyes. So really you have got everything you need. So you can create that beautiful patchwork background just like that. So they, the, the kit here, these are the fabrics that Jules has made to make that one. There it's your rainbow cat. 
but everything you need. You've even got the black and the white for the eyes. And five metres of blue fabric for doing all the background as well. So that's the bright Laser Cat quilt bundle. 49.99. So you've got Copen Cadet, Powder Blue, Na Navy and Marine. And all of those brights as well. 49.99 and that's everything you need. You will need to buy the book separately. We haven't put them together because I know some of you only want the book, some of you only want the fabric, some of you want both. So you do need to buy the book as well that with the instructions. This is merely the fabric pack. So just remember that there is that difference. Um, we've also got a nether bundle. So if you want a more traditional looking cat, we've gone for the neutral background. And again, we've got five metres. So we've got ivory. We're going to check what the colours are called. Let me put them all. Again, you've got five of them. So you've got five metres of the neutral background, all in shades from sort of ivory to the darker colour. So silver mink, vanilla, beige, ivory and nude. Those are the coat names. But those are the colours. Then we have the nine piece fat quarter kit, fat quarter pack. This is all moda fabric in navies. Look, isn't this lovely? So this is what you will use to piece the cat together. You have the black and the white. That's for the um, eyes, the eyes and the nose. Isn't it lovely? It's a much more muted shade. So it depends on whether you want a bright cat or a traditional cat. But isn't that gorgeous? So that's your nine piece fat quarter bundle. And you get the five metres of the nude fabric that's used for the background. And that's what Jules is going to be demonstrating. So you'll be able to see how that works. So you just have to choose. But remember, you will need to buy the quilt kit the quilt book, the perfect patchwork book, has all the instructions in it. So, morning, Jules. Morning. Oh, you're looking rather festive well, this morning. This is my last chance before Christmas. Oh, is it? Yeah. I did yeah. consider it, but I'm actually on air next Monday. Oh, so that's there you my go. Lot, but, oh, no, you've up the game. Mind you, uh, I, I don't know if that's going to probably get on everybody's nerves if I, I love try not it. to do a hair whip. Like that. I love it. I know. I'm going to have to really think about next week now, aren't I? I'll have to find my Christmas dress. The one that comes out mm. every year. Do you have to kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> th unfortunately, my, the Christmas dress I like the most, it's got quite narrow red and white stripes across it. Oh, it does funny things to the camera, Like a candy it? cane. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll have to consider my Christmas dress for next week. Um, so... What, how did you find the book? It was really nice, actually. Mm. Some nice kind of interesting things. If you're a cat person, obviously, it's an ideal book. But yes. even if you're not, there's some really cute stuff in there. Mm. So, um, oh, I know. Yeah. I love the patterns. And, and from the point of view, uh, it's like, it doesn't have to all be this big project because this is no. quite a hefty one. Yes. It doesn't take long, by the way, because it's, it's not a complicated well, it's big squares, project. Isn't but, it? Uh, yeah, yeah. It comes together really quickly. Mm. Um, but, yeah, they, you don't have to go for such a big project you can go for like smaller ones as well which is so it's a, nice. yeah it's yeah. a lovely book yeah it? it's really, very really well explained like nice and clear everything's set out so mm. we've got the materials the cutting the construction and then everything else so mm. it follows through nice and sensibly so okay yeah, it's all good stuff so where did you start with this then so with this obviously on the the picture that you've got there um that you haven't got exactly what they've got on there. So if you, uh, for the first quilt, the um, the one that's behind me, mm. it's it wasn't too much of a an ask to go. Well, that's red, so that's red. Yes, so obviously. So on the second quilt, for which the is going to be more the one. muted, what I did was I um, decided that I would label my prints i'd put them in order so get your prints put them in whatever order you like I don't and suppose then it matters what order does it it doesn't but when you're cutting obviously you've got to stick with that order. yeah but it doesn't when you were no, choosing it, what order does it no matter? it doesn't matter and what i did decide i went a bit controversial this morning oh, yeah. um, so instead of having the black and white for the eyes yeah i decided to go for the gray because uh, I thought it it looked a lot more muted. Right, yes, because there is a pale grey in the pack. Yeah, so instead of black, you had pale... Uh, no, instead of the white. I oh, had, okay. Yeah. 
because I wanted just to kind of so you had black look. and grey eyes rather than black and white yeah eyes. I'll show you in okay. a minute what I, what I cut out in a minute and then you get so. the white left over yeah yeah well you can use that on the border because oh, the border true. on here if you have a look it's um, like a stripy border so you could always do a stripy border oh it's just like you do um, have a scrappy border yeah you do have um bits left over as you're cutting mm. so it that's number one that's a bit more forgiving and number two it allows you to do something else with it and i made a quilt bag Ooh. with all the Ooh. you'll see where these kind of come from in a second the gray oh, okay. was my backing so i know we've got backing separately haven't we? right okay so um the gray was my backing but you do have enough to make to a do bag that. to keep your quilt in. Yeah, because if you've got the numerous amounts of quilt. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> As we all or tend to get to. Or you could use it for something else. You could use it for something else. Um, so on the uh, pattern, you're cutting six and a half uh, squares, six and a half inch squares, six and three quarter inch squares, and a six and a half by twelve and a half inch strip. So, you know I'm a fan of labelling. Mm -hmm. Just keep them... Uh, separate the six and a half and six and three quarter inch um, squares. Oh, so when you do your cutting out, cut it and label it. Yes, cut it and label right. it. That always makes more sense to me yes. anyway. The other thing is, this is quite a big quilt. Um, if you decided that you're just going to get the book and you fancy doing this, but you don't want such a big quilt, mm. just remember, so on here, these are six and a half and six and three quarters. You can scale it down. Oh, yeah, that's true. So yeah. if you had, for example a four and a half you'd need a four and three quarter to make yes. up the squares because this quote is 72 by 78 inches yeah it's a hefty old thing mm. um the so it fit it goes on to a double bed mm. quite nicely as you see the other thing about it is whenever you're doing a quilt like this just remember you if you're working in inches which we tend to do if we're in quilt uh, doing quilting um if you're i'll show you a hack in a second but if you're doing anything where you're combining rows, just remember you need the combined length of that row plus a quarter on one end and a quarter right. on the other end. Okay. So if your strip needs to be 12 inches, you need to have 12 and a half. Right. To allow so a instead of doing in. individual squares, you could cut it as squares. Yeah. So for, the, for this one, I did all of them as squares. I religiously went through them. But this morning, I've done um, some little hacks which you can get away with. So we've got fat quarters. You can get away with cutting some 12 and a half inch strips as opposed to two oh, okay. six inch, if you want to. Um, but I thought I'd show you what the whole thing looked like, kind of layered up as I've done it. So I've got, I've decided that's going to be my pink at the bottom. Sorry, I've got my labels on it. Let's turn it around. So this is the way mine's going to go. There's my turquoise, it's that one. As it goes up the way. And then the green is not green. It's, and you'll see here, I've got a big square. That's my big square for the middle. That's a 12 and a half oh, inch square. So I've really cheated mm. there. Uh, so that's that one. Then as you go up further, we have got, oops, where are we? So where are we up to? Green, and then we've got yellow, because that had got a little bit of yellow in it. And then orange, and then my red at the top is that one. So that was the order that I decided on. But you, yeah, so you I guess you could look at the picture different. and lay them out in lines and yeah. decide how you want to do it. And so now I've, I've put on them which is what and what's yes. it, what it's for. Because you, you can get yourself in a bit of a, t well, I don't know. The royal we. The royal I <laughs> can, would. can get ourselves in a bit of a Well, I thing. always think I'm going to be convinced that I'm going to remember. I don't need to label that because, of course, I'll remember. Yeah. No chance. No. And then, obviously, your uh, little background squares, that's a kind of a look as to what a rose Ooh, going to look nice. like. That's lovely. I love that. It's very sweet. Because I think sometimes it's quite difficult to, to imagine what... A different colourway would look like yes. so it's always nice yes. to have a little bit going on and i think with the um the mode of fabric it's beautiful isn't it lovely really nice and i, I like the way so don't you see on this one this has got this sort of beigey brown uh, oh, and that's okay. blends in really nicely so i decided that these were going to be the ears right yeah perfect so 
Perfect. Perfect. Like oh. what you did oh, there. Oh dear. Well, I have read all of these Is things. Some of, them, <laughs> some of them have got amazing names. Yeah. So I think I've, I'm in that You're in the Punland zone. self portrait. <laughs> You're in Punland now. I am in Cat Punland as well. So let's get on and do some construction. So before you start doing all your rows, mm. you need to start and put your little features together. Well, not so little. So we're going to do eyes first, uh, then the nose, then the ears, and then the chin. Bit, right. I suppose you call it a chin. Um, the half square triangle method that they use is um, one where you're cutting off quite a bit of fabric. So um, that's how I got to the, the bag in the end. Right, okay, because you cut off the other bit. Yeah. It's not done as cut four in one go then. No, so this will show you, it's, it's really good because if you are a beginner, this then starts to make sense as to what a half square yes. triangle yes. does. Um, but yes, it's um, if, if you are a more avid quilter you'll be looking at that going oh i can do something else with it yes, i can do it so much more efficiently <laughs> so let's start with the eyes first of all and you'll see what the gray eyes look like in a se second so for the eyes you'll have a long piece as per on the top and then you'll have a little pupil and you'll have an outer so this is the one that i've sewn together just remember, your eyes have got a right and a left. Or you could actually, I suppose you could have him looking off to one side yeah, or looking off to the up, other. Couldn't you? If you wanted to. But in this example, it's right <coughs> and a left. So what you do, first of all, is you'll join your white and black or grey and black, whichever way you want to do it. And you do it with a quarter of an inch seam as per, because we're doing quilting stuffy. <laughs> I think it always, um, if you do both, if you do quilting and if you do dressmaking, I think you naturally go to a quarter of an inch or a five eighths or a point, was it two and a half? Yeah. Um, depending on what you're doing. So there we go. So that's the first one. And you'll see this is very straightforward yeah, to come this is together. Very, very easy, yeah. isn't it? Not even pinning, not even. <gasps> not even. Not even pressing. So I'm pressing. doing a finger press. Right. Because this fabric is really good. It's it's nice and crisp. Finger press well, as well. fabric does make a difference. I mean, I often say when I'm doing different fabrics, this one presses really well. And things like that are very important, aren't they? So yeah. um, when it's a nice, crisp, a decent quality quilt and weight fabric, it does make a difference. Right, there we go. So that's, that's the R's as have it so mm. you'll see that with that row so normally you'd be doing rows and rows and rows but on this one because you've done this and you've got the two together i thought it made sense to either make the square in the middle so the green square or yes. whatever color you're having and make the end pieces as a vertical oh column, and then do that as one whole block and then sew them all um because if you if you did it in rows, you're going to have Y seams. We don't like Y seams unless we have to have them, do we? No, never. <laughs> Not a Y seam for me. No. So what I've got here is I've got that, which is my cheat centre square. Yes, because once you've quilted it, you wouldn't know. No, no, not at all. And if you decided that you weren't going to quilt it in squares, um, I did mine in scallopy bits because I thought it looked a bit like fish scales and I thought that was... <laughs> Very appropriate. <laughs> fishing cats, <laughs> not fishing chips. Um, but yeah, you can quilt it however you want, as much as you want. I think, I'm, I'm not sure if you've got wadding on this show. Did you have wadding um, on, on the previous one? We did, we had the queen yes, wadding. Yes, I have. Yeah, if you've got that one, so that, is it the queen size one? Um, this is queen size, yeah, so this is big enough. So that, this is your polyester cream size, cream size, queen size wadding. And we'll put the we'll put the details into that in a minute. For that, you only need to do it about four inches apart. Okay. So you don't need to do really intensive quilting if you don't want to. Um, but if you are buying that pack, that's really good. As in, it will do this quilt 
and it will do the quilt that I'm doing on the 11 o'clock. Oh, okay. Mm, so, so you can make two with that one. It's a really nice soft wadding as well, isn't it? Yeah. And you know how some polyester waddings, you know the craft wadding, I'm really not a fan of that because it messes up my machine. Fine. And that one doesn't? Not a problem. Oh, okay. It seems to well, be sealed. Well, it is sealed. a premium one, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know if they seal it somehow. Well, you have different different waddings for different things, don't you? It depends what you're using them for, what you like doing. Okay, so that's, you can see how that row is starting to come together. And then we'll have, on the outer edges of that, we'll have those two squares. So that's how he's going to look, his eyes are going to look. So the next thing we're going to do, and this is going to get a bit overloaded, so we'll just leave oh that there. Oh, my Lord. It looks like he's looking at you. For the moment. Yes, he's looking at me. So the next thing we're going to do is his news. Mm. So for the turquoise row, that's the colour that I'm, I'm hanging on to. So what you'll do, I've cheated ahead, but it's just so that we can get as much done as possible. Okay. So what you'll do is you will take a square, you've got a six and a half by twelve and a half, and you'll take a six and a half square and fit it on. Um, and you're going to sew, draw on the back of the paler square, draw a diagonal from corner to corner. Just make sure that you're setting it up correctly. So you've got the nose is going to be pointing down like that. Right, okay. So make sure that when you sew your triangles <laughs> on, it's going to fold yeah. back so that happens. Otherwise, you'll have a bit of a wonky nose. It'll look like he's been in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's the look you're going for. Well, so you sew directly on the drawn line here. And if you want to think ahead, to doing some scrap busting, what you then want to do is sew about a quarter of an inch away from that previously sewn line. Right, so rather than um, just discarding the offcuts, keep them. But also, you don't want a whole bunch of offcuts that you've got to then do something elaborate yeah. with. So if you have got those two sewn, just make sure before you cut anything off <laughs> that you've done the right thing. So that's what my top is going to be like. Okay. So I'm going to sew, uh, I'm going to cut off this bit. I'll show you on that side because it's clearer. So where I've sewn it, don't, don't cut anywhere here. You're cutting. Yeah, or you'll be cutting the nose. Yeah. So that's the line that you want. Mm. That's the line that you don't want. Okay. So the outside line is the line you don't want. <laughs> On telly, we don't want to cut the wrong one off, do we? Just making sure. I know. Yes. Because that's what happens. Because it's sour. There you go. So what you've got there is his news, which will be fitting there in a minute. And then this bit, you've automatically got a half square triangle. A half square triangle. Ready for something so else. just save it, put that in your stash. Mm as and where appropriate. And, and then the remainder of this row is going to be squares. So you could, if you wanted to, cut a strip, or you could do as the pattern suggests and cut your squares. Uh, so in this instance, I've just cut the squares. So what you do then, generally when you're making a row of anything, you'll sew two together first, You'll sew them in pairs and then sew the pairs together, basically. And the reason that you do that is so that you don't get any distortion because you can sew one down the way and one up the way mm -hmm. uh, and it works better. So I'll show you one side, but what I'm going to do here is just put the two end bits on there. So I'm going to put one either side. So you're getting the idea of what the quilt's going to look like. It's going together so quickly, isn't it, Jill? It You're is. You'll have finished this by the end of well, like 10 o'clock. <laughs> maybe a bit of it. <laughs> maybe not all um, not the however many squares. Not but nearly. But <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really nice quick make. Thank you, Elliot. Oh, I can have a tea. 
So we'll do one on the other side and then I'll stitch that first one on just so that you're, as I say, you're getting the feel Ooh. of it. And then we'll go on to doing what we're going to do next, the ears, I think. It's just a really effective way of, if you know, you want to make a big quilt or something that's a bit fun or use it as a picnic rug or a play yeah. mat or something. It's got but it so goes together so well, doesn't it? And as I say, if you want to scale it down, yeah. you know, you could get, uh, you could definitely get a cushion out mm. of the bits that you've got left. As long as you scaled it down, you could probably do, I don't know, two inch Two and two and a half and well, two and three quarters. Well, I think, you know, the price for that, for the Moda one at 59.99, that's amazing for double bed quilts, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Really, really good price. And you would get, as I say, you'd get a cushion or you'd get mm. um, a pillowcase or you'd get at least a trim on a pillowcase, yeah. wouldn't you? But it's just, it's really fun, isn't it? So wouldn't there we go. It would be a great that's, picnic rug, wouldn't it? That's his news. I'm getting a bit full now. So there, eyes and nose. And so we're going to do his ears now. Okay. <laughs> we need a bigger desk, please. Yeah, we have to lay it all out on the floor. <laughs> well, that's literally what I have to do. <laughs> so, on the floor. So on the ears, we are going to do... I've done a couple already. So the ear units are half square triangles again. So same as before draw a diagonal line. I don't know if you can see on this one. I can see that, yeah. Yeah, I did it. With your heat erasable friction pen? Normally, yes, because I love them. Today, no, because I thought, this is quite dark. I need and to, you want to be able to see yeah, it. Yeah, so I did a buy, I don't normally do a biro, but I did do a biro today. Right. So if you want to buy the book that this is um, featured in, that's the graphic there, it's 16.99 for 16 projects. That works out just a pound, over a pound a cat. <laughs> But with the um, the bundles of fabric that we've got to make them, the, two, the choice of the two, you do need to buy the book as a separate thing because I know lots of you want just the book, some of you got the fabric, some of you want just the fabric. So that's why we've done them separately. But if you want the book, sixteen ninety nine, I mean or sixteen pussycat projects. <laughs> it depending on how much fabric you've already got, and I'm sure people out there have got no fabric at all. No, none. Because anything like us, we don't have any fabric at no, all. No, none at all. According to husbands, none. No. <laughs> My I husband. had a fabric cull recently. Oh, it was a big Was big it cathartic mistake. or was it sad? No, big mistake. I couldn't get any more on my shelves. Yeah. So I decided, and also there was some other, I wanted to put some more books on, and so I decided I have a big cull, fabric that I've had for years and never used and wasn't that sure about. Yeah. And I got rid of it all. Yeah. Honestly, regretting it every as day. As soon as it went. As soon as it yeah. went, I wanted it. Yeah. Don't ever, no. ever no. have a fabric cull. It's not sensible. Well, mm. decide that you're going to do it, put it all out as if you're going to get rid of it. And then don't get rid of it. Yes, I should have put it in yeah. bin liners and put it in the loft. Yeah. Because yesterday I wanted to make something and I knew exactly the fabric I wanted to make with it and I didn't have it anymore. I mean, obviously I can get more things on my shelves now. And you can get more fabric. Well, I had course. a lot of non-sort of quilt fabric, like dressmaking fabric. Yeah, and yeah. Things left over from dresses I've made or sort of thicker like woolen suiting fabric. Yeah. Idiot. <laughs> Never, ever, ever doing that again. So that's how your ear is going to look. So you'll have one square, which is a six and a half, and then you'll have these two that you will have sewn across, cut. Yes. Then trimmed that down to six and a half. Right. Okay. So that's how we got these ones. Uh, and then you just literally, so this is where you're going on your rows. So I would not sew that to that yet. Okay. So that's because one row. we're doing rows. We're doing rows now. That's one row, that's another row. Mm. And then I've got my orange uh, underneath that. So I've got to have my um, mixed fabric. So I've got one, two, three, four, and I think I sewed five together there. So that was not quite. So I suppose be. what you could do is create all the units. Yes. And then lay the whole thing out and yeah. decide yeah. how you, because then you could choose which and what, what you're order you wanted where? the background fabrics yeah. in and what it yeah. looked like. I was trying, because I don't do random very well. No, well, I don't, you see, that's my problem. So I, I was trying to be random, and I um, 
up to a point I kind of got it but um, so I, I set out the main bit and so you'll do this that section and then the blue is like a border around it oh okay so you can either do rows across which is mm. what I did um, or you could do the centre section and then do a column, a column right, and yes, then across. So it depends mean. on how you mm. feel. But I did, did rows because I prefer to do rows. And then you can line up your seams yes. uh, a little bit better. Um, and I, I started doing at the end, because the, the rows by this time were very long, thinking, right, well, if I have two colours together, just keep two on that side, two on that side, and every alternate row, swap them over, mm. it'll work. So there, you see, it didn't work because I forgot which one I was going to put on. <laughs> so it didn't matter, really. So it does work no, sometimes, I'm, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> I'm not very good at that. And what I do is I lay it all out, and then I take a photo of it on my phone, and then I look at the photo, because for some reason, a photo on your phone looks is a better representation yeah. than you looking at it, because you're just looking at it as a smaller image. And then I move it all around, and then I take another photo, and oh, just because I... <laughs> Some people are really good at just randomly going, oh, yeah, but, or just doing it as they go along. I'd have yeah. to plan mine. Well, I, I tried it both ways. I tried picking off each different pile, and that didn't work because I was chain piecing at the time because my, my machine doesn't have an automatic thread cutter. So right. chain piecing for me is the thing mm. that I like to do because then I just chop it in between time. So that's why an automatic thread cutter is probably easier if you're going to yes. keep your yes. order. Um, and then I, I would say, right, okay, that's the bottom one. So I've gone bottom to... Uh, and then I'd flip it in the middle, and it's like, that's not what I started <laughs> off at. <laughs> I can do ordered. But the good thing with this is it's very quick to make, so therefore you've got the time to take the time yeah. to plan the colour arrangement if you want to. And you could also add some of your own fabrics, you know, if you think, oh, well, I've got some blues or some neutrals, yeah. I could put some of those in it as well. Yeah. So this is how this row is coming together. So this is going to be my ear row. Eero. Eero. <laughs> That's Elliot, isn't it? That's our Eero. Yeah, he's our Eero. Oh. What's he saying? <laughs> he's nothing. I've already had a go at him this morning, bless him. Right, okay, so. No, he's just not looking convinced. He doesn't, I don't think he wants <laughs> to be a hero. <laughs> so we've got, it's going to be a bit further along. Where's his eye? Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be about there. Uh, that's the start of the ear. If I bring that across. But you kind of get the idea as to what's going on. Yes on the face, a bit wrinkled. Um, so that's the face bit that you would you would do. Um, and then literally you're just doing rows and rows. So if you, for example, I've got the orange row here. Okay, so that's the top row below the, um, the ears. And what I've done on this orange row is that out of my fat quarter, I managed to get three uh, six and a half by twelve and a half. So the colourway that Jules is using at the moment is the Moda laser cat quilt. That's fifty nine ninety nine, and that gives you five meters of fabric in all the tones, five different tones of this beige. Oh look, there's a picture full of them, and nine fat quarters. So the the plain the plain fabrics which used for the background are sil silver mink. Beige, vanilla, ivory, and nude. A nude, and then you've got all of the um, the motor fabrics that go with that are used to create the cat. Fifty nine ninety nine, which for a full double bed size quilt, and this is seventy two by seventy eight inches, is amazing value for money. Yeah, it is definitely. So on this one, and you could decide. So we're doing rows here. But a couple of rows look uh, are similar. So these two rows here, so the orange and the yellow, you could, if you wanted to, just intersperse. So you wouldn't necessarily have to have a complete row. No, you don't row. have to have one row of the same no, colour. You could have that with, with another block. Because yes. all the blocks are the same, apart from where you've got the ears, the eyes yes, and the chin, yeah. which I'll show you in a second. Um, apart from those, you can mix and match. Obviously, okay. you don't want to mix the background in because you want that to yes. pop out. Yes, but want again, that's definition. where if you've cut the squares out and created the triangles, you can lay it all out and go, oh, actually, I could swap those around. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's just the cat and not the background. Yeah, you definitely, you could. Um, so from the point of view of the chin, that's the only one that we haven't done. 
uh, and I did the pink and the purple. So that's my purple row, that's my pink row. And then the background that you need for them is somewhere in this lot. There you go, you're doing really well. So the background will be, uh, it says on the on here, on this one, for to have it as a navy, but you can choose whatever colour of the background that you like, that you think will look good as, yes. a, as the chin yeah. portion. Um, Morning all, this is from um, Mrs. Mrs. in Ayrshire. Morning all, I love this book, unless it's my birthday thought I treat myself. Very oh, good idea. Happy birthday. Happy birthday on the 13th of December. <laughs> Good, good morning, Rebecca and Jules. Both looking lovely. Happy Christmas oh, to you both. You. Thank, Thank you. you, Susan. I know, but doesn't Jules look Christmassy? And I don't <laughs> at all. I'm going to have to pull my finger out it's for next me. week. Mm. Loving Jules' festive look. Her demos are always beautifully explained to from Collector in Merseyside. Oh, they bless you. Thank they you. Just well, it's because I'm a simple soul. Explained. I can hear jangly, jingly bells in the background from Jan. Yes. It's funny that. Have you seen Str look at the Str earrings? Strange. Yes. <laughs> they're gonna my ears are gonna be down they to my are chin amazing bells aren't they <laughs> nicked them off the tree Did i have you? to put them back later yeah <laughs> so with these ones again oh I'm look susan in west midland sorry i keep interrupting right. i had a color of leftover fabric from projects gave it to the sewing class stash and it's lovely to see beginners making their first projects with it that's a very generous thought susan you see i put mine in the fabric recycling bank because I yeah. didn't know anyone who wanted all my random bits because it wasn't all quilting fabric. It was more sort of random, like there was a bit of satin and a bit of tweed and things. Yeah. So I put it in the... F and um, I haven't seen anyone making lovely projects from it. I and give mine to my um, daughter's school. Yes. Now, if I Because they have a textile If department. I had done that, I would have felt better. But I didn't do that. That was a very silly idea of not doing it again. But the thing is, mm. like, in five minutes, you'll have another sack load that you can deliver True. somewhere. <laughs> True, <laughs> but it's always the same, isn't it? Yeah, from one project to the next, you've got more. Why did and I get can, rid of it? Do you know what? Before I started doing lots of projects for Sewing Street, I was really regimented. When I would cut out, I would, so for my half square triangles, they would go in a box. Um, my squares that I had surplus, they would go in a box. <gasps> the extra binding would go in a box. Doesn't happen now. <laughs> no. <laughs> because I had the time to do it, now I don't have the time to no. do it. And my so. sewing room is just getting worse and worse and worse. I, I think maybe it makes sense to you, doesn't it? It makes loads of sense to me. but And, and I do have a tidy up every now and then. But um, and, I'm not, and what you I'm not very out. good about is folding it all up nicely and ironing it into little piles and then putting it on the shelf. But when I organised <laughs> it all, I did that. I just oh, it in, okay. I'm in too much of a rush. But, um, <laughs> perfect patchwork. So if it's your birthday today, help yourself. Help yourself. Help yourself. <laughs> Put it in your basket. Yeah. Put it in your basket. You deserve it. It's a lovely book. In fact, I, what I like is there's some really good ideas that even if you don't use the actual designs, well, exactly that, um, the same. Like the need the needle needle book. case, and there's also the uh, makeup bag as well, wasn't there? Oh, there? the one with the clear bit on yeah. it. Yeah, I like that. I mean that. That's really that clever, source, isn't it? Couldn't you? Yeah, really like that one. Yes, that one there where you've got all the the brushes in it. But the needle book, I think, is fab because it's not just for needles. Yeah. You can put your whole sewing kit in it. So some really... That's it's a good I of, one, I often isn't look it? in through... We've got loads of books in the office. It's great. Often flicking through going, oh, that's a good I'll idea. I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, make one of those. I mean, I think that's lovely, isn't it? Nice ideas in there. And flying geese. Love a bit of flying geese. A bit of flying but geese. I love the oh, quilts hello. as well. Oh, you've come undone. Side, which is my favourite one. There's one with a bicycle on it that's really oh, nice. Oh, do you know that was a bit reminiscent of something that I've seen recently and I thought that looked quite nice actually. Yes, what's it called? Whisker Away Quilt. Yes. What's but that... cuter than a vintage bike with an attached basket? It's a joke, not a joke. <laughs> a vintage bike with a basket that's holding a cat. <laughs> So this is gorgeous, it's a quilt, and it's a really lovely quilt as well, and they've used cat prints. And in the centre is this beautiful vintage bicycle with the cat in the basket. Yeah, That's on. a nice quilt. Nice photographs as well. I do look like a book. 
with good photos. With good photos, yes. I like to be able to sort of go through it. And imagine what's That's best. why I like cookery books that have sort of got um, introductions oh, oh, and very, photos. Yeah, very posh things in them. Nigella's my favourite because her books you can read in bed. <laughs> you know, they're just like novels. No. <laughs> right, there we go. So, ah, that's what I was doing. Right, okay, so I've got my pink. So as long as you're going to, so that's the chin coming down on the, uh, okay, on so this yeah, side. Right. And then you sew on to that side. So, so you, you, you trim it down and then you sew on. Okay. So you've chosen a sort of a darker one. I've gone darker pink at the bottom and then my purple, um, I'll do that one as well. Which is the um, next row up is going to be that colour. That's my purple ones. So that's where it's going to go to that way. If I, put, if I sew him together, just so that you can, you've got the whole kind of range. Do, is it making sense, the order that I've put them in? Yes, to? it is. It is. But I, yeah, I guess you just got to lay it out and have a think about it. Or if you rubbish it random like I'm, just maybe just pick them up and just do it. <laughs> yeah. Just do it and see what happens. Well, that, uh, AKA the background on this one. <laughs> well, also, if you, like you say, if you spend a bit of time, depending what you're, you know, how adventurous you are or how much time you've got you know you could scale it down you can cut squares as big as rectangles to save yourself some time that's entirely up to you you can mix yeah. up all the fabric so that you haven't got it in stripes that it's more patchwork yeah but lay it out first to see if it actually works so that'll be that'll be kind of what that is going to be looking okay. like okay really it's an looking idea. very nice so like we'll, get, we'll get there there's my green row Is it becoming a cat nice. now? Uh, well, the, the cat, once you've done the face, the cat is there, isn't it? Yeah, so that's true. his chin over there. There's his chin. And you've that's done the ears. the purple row in between and the ears are up there. But it's just, it's a bit too big for the desk. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I can see the point. And now see. I can see why you've done grey for the irises yes. rather than white. Yeah. Because it's a bit gentler, isn't I it? I thought if, if I did white, it would just kind of go, Whoo! Mm. White on there is exactly the right yes. colour. And you could change the cat's eye colour because it's only two squares. Yeah. yeah you, you wanted could. a cat with green eyes yeah. or blue eyes. or. And you do have a bit of leeway with, with all your cutting out and everything. Mm. So don't be afraid to play around with it. Just make sure that you, you cut out the, the correct yeah, amount of... Yeah, but if you off. had some fabric of your own, if you wanted to change the eye colour, oh, yeah. then that would be quite nice. Yeah, you? definitely. Mm. I like his face. It's lovely, It's really cute, it? yeah. That would oh. be quite, quite good as a, just a little throw on its own, I think. Just to do that, take that centre yes, panel. and just have that as a, a cat. Well, it's ideal for putting on the sofa for the cat to sit on, isn't yes. it? Or yeah. on the bed. Yeah. Because I know they do leave a lot of fluff. I don't have a cat, but I imagine you. I used to have a cat, <laughs> and it did leave a lot of fluff a on lot the of bed. Fluff but now I have a dog, place. and I think the dog... Oh. And it's all hair. <laughs> well, no, actually, the dog's fine. It's actually all right, but if I had a cat as well, I think the dog would chase the cat. You might have a, I don't know, actually. I met somebody the other day who had a dog, and she had... I think the cat rules, mm. doesn't it? In a, in I a think household. So. Yeah, yes. the cat's rule. So I think, maybe it's that way around. Yeah, I think so. So, if you want, anyway, sorry, Jules, thank you so That's much. That's all right. So much. I'm just going to have a quick run through the kit. We will see you back here in another hour. Yes, another quilt. When we're doing another quilt yes. on turtles. We're going to move from cats to turtles. Which is so cute. So cute. You'll love it, yes. Oh, look, there it is. There it is. Yeah, it's The really turtle cool. quilt. So, we'll see you back in an hour. Thank you for cool. that. It's been great. I'm going to have Thanks some for, breakfast. Yes, probably a good time, five to ten. <laughs> yeah. I already had mine. Um, so if you want the book, sixteen ninety nine for 16 projects. That's got, I mean, I've shown you already, it's got all of the little projects, it's got quilt projects, it's got loads and loads of different things in it. Beautiful book. If you want to make the bright one, the bright quilt that Jules has got hanging behind her, in this kit you get five meters of blue fabric in five different shades of five so a meter each of those five shades then you get nine fat quarters of all the primary brights that you need so you get the black and the white that's for the eyes because they're very important but then you also get the colors for the background you get red orange yellow green blue 
purple and pink. And that will cover all, make the rest of the quilt. And you will have some left over. So that's 49.99, and that is all the fabric that you'll need to make a full double bed size quilt. Amazing. Obviously, you will need to buy the book as well, but there's so much in the book that you will be able to use for loads of other projects. And I think that's a fantastic quilt and really quick. And if you remember to write down the 13th of December, when you get your quilt home, come back and watch Jules' demo with all of her tips if you want to do it a bit quicker or talking about placement. Um, so that's the Brights kit. If you want to make the more muted Moda kit, that um, which features some of, some of the fat quarters of Moda, not the plain fabrics, you have got, in that one, five half metres of neutrals. One, two, I like to put them in order, three, four, five, silver mink, beige, vanilla, ivory and nude, that's those five. And then you get the nine fat quarters, you've got the Moda prints, gorgeous aren't they but you can see how well they work so if you just want a more traditional more muted maybe you're going to put your quilt in the living room or you don't want the really bright one it's up to you we've just covered the two different sort of tastes or depending where you're going to put it you get the five prints and then you get the black and the white for the eyes or like Jules was saying you could use the grey and then you get the complementary um plain colours that go really well within Moda. So you've got the pale grey and the blue and the sort of whiny colour. So that's the Moda one, whiny. That sounds awful, doesn't it? <laughs> whiny. Plum, plum. Let's go plum instead. It sounds better than whiny. So that's the Moda quilt kit. Um, now, if you want backing for the quilt, we have got some bundles for you because you need five metres of the backing fabric. This is teal. Teal, 100% cotton. This is our Rose and Hubble quality um, cotton fabric. It's 44 inch wide, your normal quilting width. £33.40 for five metres. It's cut as one whole piece and you're saving £1.50. So if you need backing for any other quilt and you want a five metre piece, it's 44 inch width. So often with, with um, quilts, you need to cut and join. This is enough for a quilt that's will measure that's two and a half metres long. £1.50 saving on the bundle. So if you cut it in half and join it back together, that will give you um, two and a half metres by 2.30, about that. £33.40, fantastic value for a back quilt backing bundle. Um, also got it in, is this one nude? Beige, five metres of beige, comes as one whole cut piece. So if you bought two of them, you wouldn't get a 10 metre piece, you'd get two five metres. This is a pre-cut piece. Um, beige and it's our 44 inch width quilting weight fabric. Now, if you're not sure what colour you want, you want something just very neutral, this is the seeded. I love this one because it looks like calico. It's got that seed fleck in it, but it is exactly the same as the other fabrics. It is your um, quilting weight cotton, but it's natural seeded. And there's a 150 saving on this. So this is a beautiful fabric. This is really good. If you don't want to use it for quilt back, brilliant for cushion backs and tote bags because it's got that seeded look. It's like a calico, but it's your normal quilting weight cotton. So it is finer and smoother, but it has that seeded look on the back. Right, so thank you so much for joining me in this hour. Um, there are lots of tools, quilting tools, particularly quilting pins, which are really good for when you're layering your quilt together. Um, just go on to sewingstreet.com and you will see it all on there. Now, I will be back with you in a couple of minutes for, we've got loads of um, pre-cuts and books as well. Really beautiful fabric. So if, like me, you're rubbish at putting fabrics together and you'd rather buy a selection that have all been put together from the same design range, that's what we've got coming up next. So I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. Hello, I'm Sam from Adventures in Crafting, wishing you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hi, it's Yvonne from Village Fabrics here. Can't believe that another year has just flown by. I just want to take the opportunity to wish you the happiest of Christmas and a really healthy 2022. So, Happy Christmas from our Christmas room, which is here all year round. So, Happy Christmas! 
Hi everyone, it's me, Jules Mayu, wishing you a fantastic, fun, festive season. Let's hope we'll have a raring good time this year, sending you lots of warm hugs from me and Lola. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Hi everyone, I'm Sally Ann Harrison and I am a patchwork and quilting fanatic. Um, and I've been sewing all my life. I'm currently based um, here in Bristol but I used to live in the USA and that's where I picked up the sewing bug big time. I suppose you could say that my sewing journey began when I was about eight or nine. I distinctly remember the first thing that I ever made um, and it was, I, I, I say I ever made on my own, obviously I did sewing at school, but I came home and I chopped up one of my mother's old uniforms and she used to work in a store. I cut up these little pieces of cotton and I made myself a bikini top and I can remember the absolute thrill of putting this little bikini top on and going out on my bicycle and riding up and down the road and that was the first thing that I ever made and I was totally, totally smitten. My claim to fame has to be um, demonstrating at the Houston International Quilt Show. Um, I am very heavily into wool applique and I developed a technique where you would use a perlay thread on the top of a sewing machine and they were interested in Houston I actually went along to demonstrate in open studios, studios whilst the show was on. It was really, really magical to have so many people that were interested in what I could do with a sewing machine. I am one of the longer running um, guests now on Sewing Street. Goodness knows how that happened. But I still get an absolute buzz every time I come up and do a demo and I love receiving your messages and the feedback after the show, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I'm hoping to bring you lots of new techniques and different ideas, so do stick with me and follow my Sewing Street journey. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. And welcome back to Sewing Street. So this hour, it's all about gorgeous pre-cut fabric. So if, like me, you've um, given away half your stash and wish you hadn't, and you now need to get some more. This, or if you love pre-cuts, but you want to, because you, you didn't struggle putting fabrics together, or you want a little bit of fabric from a whole collection, so you know it goes together, then this is the hour for you. I've also got some books as well. So quite often I'll see a charm pack or a layer cake or jelly one. I think oh, I love that. Not really sure what project I'm going to do with it. We've got some books for you as well. So I've got some beautiful ones here, and I they said I can go in whatever order. I'm going to go for this motor one first. So this one is. 
what's it called i'm gonna just try and open it up for you then we can have a look so in the layer basically a layer cake is 10 inch squares of fabrics all from the same collection so that you know it's from the uh, i'll say it's the ladybird collection so you know that they all go together because they're all from the same collection but you know sometimes you don't want a half a meter of each of them you don't want a big amount because you just want a small selection but there's a lot of fabric here because you get 42 now this is mode of fabric it's your normal 100 percent cotton quilting weight fabric but it's mode of quality and look at the fabrics in this beautiful aren't they look Featuring these is so pretty and floral. It's almost like a watercolour painting effect. Look at this one. Now, all the colours and all the prints, we've got two of that one. I think we've got two of most of them. They all go together. So you've got that print with the mustard background, exactly the same as that one with the white background. So you know that whatever you make from these, it's all going to go together. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's very, a bit Monet, that one. Isn't it? It's a bit impressionist. That's pretty, isn't it? Really, really traditional print. But, you know, it's it's kind of your traditional floral, but with a real um, modern colour vibe to it. And then you've got a little bit of peach swirl. So you've got different levels of prints. You've got your large scale prints, your small volume prints, your low volume prints. <gasps> Look at this one. Little birds. Really pretty, isn't it? I think this is a beautiful fabric collection. I love this one with the deep coral. So we've seen this print again and again. So you'll see quite a lot of the same prints in these collections, but in different colourways. And that one in the deep coral, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, I missed that one. There's the swirly one. And that's nice. Um, then we go back to this beautiful print. So it's up to you how you use them. There's enough here if you want to just join them together in big squares or you want to do subcut them into um, squares if you want to use them for half square triangles. I love the mint because the mint goes beautifully if you look at it with the coral and I think it goes really well with the mustard as well. It's a very fresh, pretty, summery print. I mean look at the big that big one that I showed you before in the, in the mustard. It looks beautiful in there look at the um the bird print in a different colorway do they have a spoke yeah they do they have a way up that way up yeah so you've got parrot that thing that might be a parrot all different birds exactly the same as that first one i showed you but just in a different colorway love that it's very fresh isn't it very pretty another bird print and that's a nice swirly one as well so look and then the then we're moving into blues. So you've got mustard, jade, coral, and look at that. It's a beautiful colour, isn't it? And again, you'll see this print in the different print. You'll see this colourway in all the different prints as well. Very pretty. I mean, I love that collection. So if you're thinking I want something very traditional, very floral, but in a, you know, an updated colourway, that's the thing for you. I love that one. So that's the Moda Ladybird collection. Right, let's move on to some Riley Blake. And I get to open them as well, which is even better. Oh, this one is called Sonnet Dusk. And I need, I'm going to have to get a pair of scissors. So this one, again, you've got 42 10-inch squares in the pack. This is brand new to Sewing Street. And if you order today, we can still guarantee delivery before Christmas. Mm. So if you're watching Last Minute Gift for somebody you know who loves fabric... Should we take them out? <laughs> Even better. Yeah. I would quite, I'd quite like one of these. Look, isn't that a beautiful colour background? Really sort of dusky pink. This is Riley Blake. But you've got different levels, levels of the prints here, haven't you? Look. Actually, if I show you on the back first, I'm going to go through them all. But look, there's, that's how the prints all lay out. So you've got 
the floral prints across the top with these back. I mean, lot, I'm going to show you the colours. The colours are sort of dusky pink and pinky grey and then this beautiful blue and the mustard. But isn't then, and you've got wide stripes and spots, but not regular, not like a polka dot. They're irregular spots all over the place. And you've got butterflies. So that's what the whole collection looks like together. I think that's actually stunning, isn't it? You always, you often get that this with designer fabrics, is that the colour choices and the patterns are quite stunning. So even with this stripe, you've got three colours in here because you've got the edges of the stripe are just outlined in a slightly darker shade, which really makes them stand out. I mean, that's such a pretty fabric. It's just soft pinks and greys. Love the stripe. I'm, I'm wanting to get to this spot. So look at the spot. Isn't that lovely? It's not your regular spot. They're not even regular circles, slightly different shapes, but it's just so pretty. And doesn't it go beautifully? You can see what I mean, um, how the stripes are outlined, but isn't that lovely together? Very unusual collection. Sonnet Dusk. It's gorgeous. And here's the one I showed you before with the butterflies. Beautiful colourways. It's got that kind of sort of vintage feel to it, but almost with the colours slightly updated. But this same print again, this is the beauty of buying a whole fabric collection, is that you've got the same prints, but in the different colourways. I love that with the blue, um, maybe chrysanthemums. Gosh, I'm never good about never great at flowers. And then you've got that lovely ocean blue colourway and darker brown. It's beautiful, isn't it? $49.99 for that one. Let me pop that back there. So, should we have a look at some books? I've got some more, but I'm going to have a look at some books first so that if you, um, if you want some ideas for what you can do, if you've bought them and you want to know, get some ideas for this, Quilt Some Quarters. Now, this book is um, design, it's all designs from Pam and Nikki Lintot, who are absolutely fantastic fabric designers and it's all um, quilt patterns made from fat or long quarters so if you've got pre-cuts and you've got smaller pieces of fabric this book is designed for them it includes a bonus quilt design but let's just have a quick look so 19.99 for this book and you've got 12 quilts in here now what would you normally pay for a quilt pattern more than that and this is less than two pounds a pattern it's fantastic. Now, their quilts are just, they're not only good at, re, you know, real experts in designing quilts, technically, but they're brilliant at choosing colours as well. So, in the, in the book, you've got all of the different quilts. Really, really easy to understand. I've worked quite a lot with their um, instructions, and they always make perfect sense. So, you've got simple things. So, if, you, if you're buying the... Um, any of the pre-cuts I've just shown you, this would be perfect for it because it's just a quick one, but it's it's been labelled as that. It's a quick, if you want to make a quilt very quickly, then you can make it from this. Again, just squares, brilliant for a layer cake. And the good thing is when you look at this quilt, you know, all of those colours and prints blend beautifully together. Um, this is using one of Cave's, um, some of Cave's fabric, and I have got some of his leg, is layer cakes, which I will go through in a minute, so you can see those. So that's using the cave design. But because of all of these layer cake packs and all the charm packs, they are all using fabrics from a fabric collection. You know that if you put them together in this way, they will all go together. So I have, I'll show you these in a minute, but wouldn't that one work? Wouldn't it look beautiful with that one? I mean, it might be, it might be exactly the same one. She doesn't say, they ju it's just you need 12 quarters, but you know, you could do that with the charm pack. So we'll go through that one in a minute. So making the quilt, heart. So you've got such a different balance of types of projects here. That's quite a simple one, but that's showcasing fabric, isn't it? You know, that's making the best use of a large scale print. I like the crosses in it as well. Look, that's what it looks like laid out. So if you, you know, if you've got in your charm patch, you will have large scale prints, and that's the best way to show them off with, you know, because you've got large pieces here. But I like the little kisses in between. That's clever, isn't it? Just for simple, plain fabrics, how they've worked out how the different colours go together. Um, I love these quilts. They're really nice. That's the one that's on the um, the cover. Hidden butterflies. 
It's very clever, isn't it? When you look at it, it's got different things. Let me have show you this sort of, they always put in a flat shot of the quilt. That you've got this sort of grid system. But it's really pretty, isn't it? But it's, it, I th it's more, it looks more complicated than it is because you've got grids within grids and squares. But again, a really good way of using up um, your fabric stash. Hourglasses, that's brilliant for your bright fabrics. That one, look, well, it's called Falling Leaves, but it looks a bit like lollipops, doesn't it? Oh, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Really lovely. So you've got a real different, I mean, for 1999, you've got all of these projects, but you've got a real different balance of modern designs, traditional designs, different colorways, octagon stars. So that's that one. So let's go, should we go to the cave one? Oh. This is gorgeous. Well, I always love cave fabric, so it's not difficult to choose, is it? I was lucky enough to go to the NEC. Oh gosh, when was that? Ages ago. Can't remember when that was. July. Um, and got to interview Cave. I mean, where, where do you start? Do you know, why, why do you? How do you choose your colours? Couldn't even ask him those questions because it's just, you know, wh how this. There's so many questions you could ask him. So I just decided to ask him some quick fire questions. Knitting or crochet? Tea or coffee? And he was like, it was quite interesting actually because I said he had to answer very quickly. It was definitely knitting because he really wanted to learn to crochet but had never crocheted. Anyway, so this one you've got um, four, t 42 pieces, 10 inch squares. This is the prism charm, um, charm pack. All 10 inches, but look at the colours and the prints in here. All oh, beautiful, beautiful colours. I mean, all of them go together amazingly, don't they? Look. You just don't know where to start with them, do you? Love the orange. I mean, we had, well, our early bird, if you, were you with me at eight and our early bird fabric was um, Philip Jacobs, half metre, the only Philip Jacobs fabric that we've got by the half metre. And he is in the cave collective. So some of these he will have designed, probably the large florals, because that's what he's, he's best at. Oh, I love this one. There's a cabbage print that's my favourite in here. I love the swirly ones. That's gorgeous. Look at them, but don't the colours go together beautifully? So this is the prism colourway. Look, there's the cabbage one. All the veins of it is beautiful. There's cabbages, ornamental cabbages. And the zigzag. But look, I mean, these colours are amazing. So the, the quilt that I just showed you in the previous book, Quilts from Quarter, is, would be amazing in this. So you've got beautiful greens. And I love how it works out interspersed with spots as well and the grid, they're just beautiful fabrics. Well, I mean, we all know he's a genius, don't know how he does it. But then you go into the blue. So in this collection, it's very rainbow. You've got all the reds, then you move into oranges, yellows, greens, blues, and then the blues move into mauves as well. So if you want to make a rainbow quilt, but using cave fabric, this is the charm pack for you. Look at it. I love that. Very vibrant, isn't it? So this is your rainbow cave. Lots of you have that in baskets. Now I tell you, but remember, if you if it's in your basket, it's not yours unless you check out. Unfortunately, it's in your basket. Other people can take it. We've got lots of you with this in your basket because it is beautiful. But if you want it, you need to check out. Now, I'll tell you what works beautifully with um, these K fabrics are Delphine's patterns. So which one would I choose for this one? Maybe the Tree of Life. So obviously, we know what a genius Delphine is at designing and creating beautiful, beautiful works of art. But you need the fabric to make them with. But with the way that Delphine designs, you only ever need small pieces of fabric. So something like this cave thing for this beautiful tree of life quilt. In here, there's all the 
all the instructions, all the templates, everything that you need to do. Now, I mean, Delphine's designs are beautiful. So there's all the templates and everything. This is what it will look like, this beautiful tree of life. $9.99 for the instructions. They're very comprehensive. This makes a wall hanging, a tree of life wall hanging that measures 43 by 35 inches. It's best to use fabrics that do all gel and hang together. So if you want to create a beautiful rainbow one, choose the cave one. If you want something that's a little bit um, muted and floral, then the Riley Blake one I showed you earlier was lovely. For a really pretty one, then there's the Moda one I chose earlier. Um, Riley Blake Primrose Hill. That would work well. So before I open them all, I'm going to show it's nice to see an, a small overview of what you get. This is very pretty. Riley Blake are well known for their sort of really sort of modern take on, more, or on designs and colours. They go together so well. And I, this is where I struggle. I wouldn't think to put together sort of that green and that blue and that beige, but they, they hang together. It's nice as well that they do put all the pictures on the back because it's much easier for you to see and plan when you're trying to decide what to do. So if I show you some of the um, prints, I mean, it's a beautiful shade of blue, so soft, but the pink and the green really stand out on it. Now, quite often with a lot of charm packs, you'll get two of each print. That's quite normal because these are from one fabric collection. They don't often have 42 fabrics, but this, this is their plain fabric. There's always a plain, there's a small volume, a low, a high volume. There'll be um, large scale print, but this one has got tiny stars all over it. And love, uh, like an hourglass, 49.99 for 42 pieces, 10 inch squares of designer Riley Blake fabric. So pretty, isn't it lovely? Love the pinks, nice shade of pink, because doesn't it go together really well with the blues? I like that one. But they've got the same shades in each one, and it doesn't matter which one you choose, they all to go together beautifully. And this one's got text on the background of it as well. That's nice, isn't it? And then we've got... Um, We've got the whole collection of fabrics, the same prints, but in this lovely sort of neutral shade as well. Works really well with the stars on the background. And then the green. Oh, and it's got a nice stripe as well. I like the stripe and the green as well. So if you love Riley Blake, you like these um, co colours. They're very fresh and crisp and clean. But without being... Like modern, you know, I hate that word modern because it always makes you think, oh, like stuff that nobody likes modern. But it's actually just a lovely take on it. Um, how is that not going back in? Right. Right, now if you like those fabrics, we have got it, but you want to have a jelly roll. Da -da! We have that here. So in here, you've got... Two and a half inch strips that are cut across the full width of fabric. So they're 44 inches wide, but each one is two and a half inches long. And they are strips of fabric from that whole collection I've just showed you. 49.99 for 40 strips. To, and they're all cut already. Now, these are brilliant. Obviously, there's lots and lots of quilt designs that you can make just from these strips. But they're also brilliant for binding as well, because you can just join them all together. And that's because two and a half inches is perfect for binding a quilt. So if you love that Riley Blake collection, Primrose Hill, there it is in a jelly roll. Very nice. Next. Ah, so the Sonnet Dusk. Now, this is the only one that I've got in a, a smaller five inch charm pack. So the Sonnet Dusk, which is this one here, if you want it in just five inch pieces, depending on what you're making, then you can have it in, in the smaller pieces as well. It depends. Sometimes it depends on the quilt size you're making or what you're going to do with it. There are lots of designs that are made specifically just for the five inches. So if you love this fabric, but you don't want as much of it, $15.99 and you get 42 of these five inch pieces featuring the beautiful colours, sort of soft pinks. So you've got soft pinks and beiges and minks, beautiful colourways. So you choose, you either have the 
10 inch charm pack all this one for 15.99 exactly the same print so i won't open it but sonnet dusk it's gorgeous isn't it 15.99 or you just buy the 10 inch one and cut it into quarters and then you get five inches and you get four times as much but it depends depends what you want and what what you need and what design you're going to do but they're lovely aren't they now we don't have that one as a jelly roll we're just 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 double checking in advance um do we have another look at another book moda blockheads 48 quilt along blocks for filtered quick so if you fancy the idea of making a sampler quilt something i really would like to do and that's basically where you have blocks of the same sizes but you have a different um you have different block design in each one like that so you, what you do is you, you tend to use a fabric collection so that the colours go together or you choose fabrics that go together, but you make a different block for each one. It's what they used to do, could be, you know, a bit like people made cross-stitch samplers, they'd make quilt samplers because it was a way of practising their blocks. But that's gorgeous, isn't it? But all of these are in here. So these are giving you some old examples of this is how people used to create them. I mean, they're just gorgeous, aren't they? So they've used all, the, but like this one here, all different blocks, but using just red, white and cream. So they all goes together. All vintage colours, but it's lovely, isn't it? And do you know what the joy of doing this is? Is that you can really break it down. You can make one block at a time. And that one's lovely, it's just got the navy border. And there's loads and loads of different colours, but it goes together really well. But it is one of those things where you don't make it in the weekend, you do it over time. But I think it's lovely that they've given all of these examples, because it gives you the colourways and the, the thoughts. So there's your, um, the examples of them, and then you've got the quilt blocks, and there are loads of them. Look at all of these. They've all got names, Whirly Gig. But with these quilts, they weren't always patchwork. Some were like applique, applique as well. So you've got a B there. Love that one. The coronation one in the blue, the red, blue and white. Turnstile. So look, there's loads of them. Seven, eight. How many of these have we got? It actually says at the front. There are 48. 48 blocks. So for 18.99, we've got... I mean, I can get... Look, there's flying geese variation... 48 blocks and these are all the blocks that are featured in the quilts that I showed you at the front. There's even a cat and dog block. Double delight star. I mean there's so if you want to make your own or take one block and just repeat that to use across a whole quilt but so many ideas and the inspiration in all the blocks are the same size finished. So if you want to make the, the picture that they showed you at the front there are the individual instructions at the end of how to make them. So this lovely one here, if you want to make that, it tells you how many blocks you need, how much fabric you need for the sashings and the borders, because that's often the problem, isn't it? Thinking, I've no idea, but it actually tells you exactly how much you need. So this beautiful one, where's the red, blue and white one that I really liked? Um, that one, Lisa's blockhead quilt. So it tells you how many blocks you need, um, she had, like she sub substituted the eight applique blocks in this book with patchwork blocks and then exactly how to construct it. So it's a really lovely way if you've always fancied making your own sampler quilt, this is a perfect book for $18.99 for, I can't remember what I said now, 48 blocks and the piecing instructions to make all of those quilts as well. That's incredibly good value. You know, and if you just think, I love that block, I'm going to make a whole quilt from that, just using that one block, then it's there. Love that. Lovely. Um, right, I have got, should we do another Riley Blake one? Yeah. I need to put these back in powers. We'll have a nightmare put them together afterwards, otherwise. Um, this one is called Community. Oh, I'll take it out and then we'll have a look at the... Um, $44.99. So if you want to have a quick look before we look at the fabrics, you've got here, I love these are all houses, and then you've got these street scenes. So you've got people and dogs and lampposts and um, people having in you know, cafes. Like, well, it is the community, isn't it, and trees. And then you've got lovely sort of prints that will go with those. So you've got some checks and hearts. 
It's lovely, that one, isn't it? Let me turn it over. We'll have a look. I like the green. It's a really lovely, fresh spring green. <laughs> look, that one. Go man sunbathing in the park. Brilliant. I mean, these are great. You know, obviously, you can use them all together, but they're really good if you want to use them for fussy cutting. The old man reading newspaper. Brilliant for fussy cutting for EPP and FPP. So you've got this lovely green colourway. And then you've got a more of a citrine coral in large floral, small floral. <laughs> Look, I don't have a tandem. The dog chasing the bull. That's lovely, isn't it? And a fountain. So you've got these sort of large prints that are, that are really nice balance for other things. But then all of the other prints go really well with them. Be good for making some of those blocks, wouldn't they? Because you could use, for some of the blocks in the previous book, you've got larger squares in the centre of them and then you've got smaller prints. Um, you've got smaller prints sort of round the edges. So you could use some of the, f the feature um, prints around the edge. I like this as a gingham. It's like a hand-drawn one. So this is a pretty, look, there's the same print. So you've got all of these same prints and then you've got houses and schools and garages. And um, pinks. Nice fabric collections, a lot, a lot you could do with this. But again, you know, just use it all together. If you want to make a sampler quilt, this is ideal. I like the pink on that one. It's all very fresh, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's what I love about Riley Blake. Riley Blake. Riley Blake. They always use very fresh fabric prints. Have we got that one as a new? Right. That was that one. I've got to put them back in piles or I'll get confused. Let's do another book. Sensational quilts for scrap lovers. Yes, well, we all are because we're rubbish at throwing out fabric or not ever, ever doing anything with it. So I'm always lovely to keep hold of your scraps. So 11 easily pieced projects for scrap lovers. 23 99 for 11 projects. It's a good price, isn't it? 23 99 for 11 quilts. Let's have a look at them, though. I mean, look, there you are. There is an overview of what we are getting in the book. I mean, it's just lovely, isn't it? So, um, I love that one. So rainbow, but scraps. So this is brilliant. You don't have to buy any fabric for this one. You just need the book and a massive stash of scrap fabrics. So it explains, is it really clear photos of how to do it and how to create the blocks? And then it shows, which is quite nice. It gives you some ideas Oh, I love this. Um, how to organise how to organise your scraps, which is great because, like Jules was saying, she puts them all into a plastic bin and doesn't know what to do with them. Shelf anything greater than half a yard, or put it in the scrap bin, or have it in a fat quarter container. I just keep all mine together, and and I and I should I should do that. Tells you how to organise your colours. Transitioning colours that are not colour neighbours. Cur piecing curves. We're going to get onto the, the quilts. This is the best bit, isn't it? <gasps> Look at that. So now you've organised your stash and your scraps into colour bins, as it is explained, into purples and greens and yellows and blues. Creating this now is easy because you think, right, well, I just need the purples. You pick those all up. Right, that's that one. Oh, look at that one. And again, you could, obviously you don't, if you think, well, I've got in my scrap bin, I've got a lot of blue and I've got a lot of green. You can change those colours. But be, the lovely thing is, is when you look at the fabrics that are used in these, none of the same. They are all small scraps, but because they're in the same colour section, it all goes together. And isn't it lovely to think that you could work out, right, well, I've got this amount I can use for that and I only need to buy X amount to finish it. Or you might not even, if you're like me, I don't think I'd have to buy any fabric to make that. And, you know, you, you're creating something out of all the leftovers that you haven't thought you'd be able to use. And there's some beautiful patterns here from some quite modern block designs. That's lovely, isn't it? And, you know, even with that one, that's just got even got the scraps of Shashko fabric in the background. But you could just buy a plain navy if you've already got all the colours as well. It's gorgeous. 
I like that one because obviously it's not just the colours, the bright colours we have in our stashes, it's all the greys and the neutrals as well. And that's a really good way of mixing them all together. And it shows you, doesn't it, that it looks lovely when you mix together. If you look at this really close up, it looks lovely when you mix together just for shades of neutral. So if you've sorted out your stash into just bins or carrier bags or whatever of shade, of colours, then it's very easy to create that, isn't it? Ooh. Oh, shall we? We've been, we've been given permission to lower the price of this one. How much? How much? $23.99 was $19.99. That's amazing. Under £20 for 11 projects. But do you know what? Even the best thing about this book is it tells you how to organise your fabric stash. I really need that. So rather than it all just sitting on shelves, I have no idea what you've got. Organise it. Put what you, what does it say? More than a fat quarter goes on the shelf, less than fat quarter goes into the scrap bin. This is, this is your new year book, isn't it? New year, organise your fabric stash and maybe you should set yourself a challenge. I'm going to make a quilt from fabric I've already got. Then it gives you a good excuse to be allowed to buy more. But that's a nice one. I love this one, the fractured full patch. It really shows, you know, it's, and in your collection, you will have fabric that you like. Nobody buys fabric they don't like. 19.99. Take another, discount it again. Is that because it's Christmas? 18.99, 18.99. I just think this is absolutely fantastic because once you've made a quilt or two from all the fabrics you've already got, or if you don't want to make a quilt, use the design and make a cushion. Make a tote bag. If you haven't got enough to make a whole quilt, make something smaller. But once you start using your stash, you know, and if you start at the beginning by the how to sort it out, then you'll have loads of space and you'll be able to make more projects and great excuse to buy even more fabric and then you can do it all over again. Love that one. Gorgeous. $18.99. That is a fantastic price to get you organised, which I could really do with. Right, let's have another Delphine instruction. I love the fighting hairs. This is one of my favourite ones. Now, again, you can use any, this, all of Delphine's designs, use small pieces of fabric. Again, really good way of stash busting or using small areas. I've got bits all over this. This is lovely, isn't it? Do you remember, uh, did you see um, Delphine when she, produced, when she presented this on air? Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Again, using small pieces of fabric to create this beautiful silhouette. In the instructions, all of the information, all the walkthrough information about how to do it, how to work it, um, and how to make the hair. Now, this would work really well in... Um, Where's the, where's the second okay, one here? In this one, I think. So I used one set of Delphine's instructions. That must send you a picture um, at the weekend to make one of my Christmas presents. And I made it from, I made her Daisy Cow. And I made it from small scraps of fabrics. Oh, wow, how impressed am I? In fact, I made it from Cave, because I love Cave. This is gorgeous. So for the fighting hairs, because they are, I mean, this one is in purples and blues. She's made them in other colours. But in this collection of Cave fabrics, we're all about citrus colours, so sort of oranges and yellows and greens. But it would look beautiful in that as well, because... The important thing about her designs is that you use shades and tones of the foam fabrics. I mean, the all, the tree of life as well, which I showed you earlier, be absolutely perfect for this. And the tiger. I'll show you that one in a minute. I've got the tiger, the tiger design. And the cat. But this is all shades of citrus. It's lovely, isn't it? I mean, a lot of the fabrics are the ones that I showed you in the other pack, but different shades with the spots. But um, I used a smaller charm pack for mine and I just had so much choice because you only need small pieces. It's lovely that when you, um, you trace them and work out what you need, just 
combining small parts of these. Like, the, you know, you've got the plain orange, and when you put that together with the floral, so, you know, if you were making two half square triangles, that absolutely stunning combination. And the great thing is I didn't have to sift through my charm pack to see which fabrics went together. They all do. Look at that with the leaves and the veins in it. All of the fabrics go together. And I like this because this makes you think of summer cocktails and brightness. But it does work very well when you cut it into smaller pieces for applique. So this is all, you can see, isn't it, all the shades with the, the pale blue as well of citrus things and green and more spots. Look at this one. I remember this one. I had a different colourway. But look, the feathers. Turn it that way around. Look at that one. Stunning, isn't it? And what's great about this is when you want to, you want just a small sliver, slither of pink, you can just cut the centre bit. So you've got so many different bits just going on in one piece. Or if you think, well, I have no idea, I'll just cut a piece going across the centre of, of the whole thing. It's amazing. So that is a beautiful layer cake charm pack. Right. Oh, no. I'll have to pack all the ways. Right, Tara the Tiger. Now, Tara the Tiger would work really well in any of those charm packs. Which one would I choose? Probably the last one, actually, because I like the idea of it being in those real citrus colours. It's absolutely gorgeous. Although, Elliot says he'd go for the prism. Yes, I guess it would, because the prism collection is um, all rainbow, because you've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. But that, for the tiger... Now I'm really getting mixed up. Oh. I'll just keep them in little piles and we'll sort them out. So there's the tiger. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? And again, it's only using small pieces, but it just works amazingly well. And all you need for the fabric, yeah, so you can use two and a half inch strip panels. So the jelly rolls are ideal for this. Or you can just cut, because they're only small pieces that you need of each of the fabrics. Because when you look at it, it's just small pieces. But because they're layered in stripes against a very neutral background, it works amazingly. But it's nice to use um, a collection of fabrics from the same fabric collection so that the colours blend together. That's the title. Look, please, please remember though, everybody who's got stuff in their baskets, you do need to check out. A lot of the items that I'm going through were very limited on stock. So if you don't check out, somebody else will take it out of your basket. But look, all the templates there as well. And having made one of Delphine's, I know how easy they are. It's brilliant. Absolutely love that one. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Um, fat quarters. This one. This one, aqua orange. So this is a collection of Fat Quarters and Beth Studley. Now we feature quite often Beth Studley's patterns on Sewing Street and they're always fab. Lovely, you know, from the little sort of pods to, this one is 12, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Um, they're always, you know, the little pot storage pods and the different items make, and off a lot of them, are made, the photos in them, using Beth's fabrics. So she has her own fabric collection tied together with ribbon. This collection is 12 fat quarters. Now she has her very own distinctive style and colour palette that you will see, if you've seen any of her, um, the storage pods and the lace-up ones, the different things she does. So let me just show you one of them so you can see the print and the colours that she uses. $44.99 for 12 fat quarters. <gasps> but today, we're going to crush it because it's nearly Christmas and because Elliot's producing. He's getting power mad. They told him he could reduce the pad. $39.99 for 12 fat quarters. Isn't that gorgeous? So she has this beautiful colour palette of jade, this lovely fuchsia, purple and mustard, and that features across her fabric range. So that's just one of them. Then we've got stars. That works out at £3.30 a fat quarter. 
for Beth Studley fabric. I mean, it's gorgeous, isn't it? So we've got stars and you see how the colour palette goes? I think actually the tiger would look amazing in this one. It really would. I think the tiger, see one. Because look, when you look at the um, the tiger, because this it's it's kind of an Indian feel is with the henna in it as well, isn't it? But the colour the way is beautiful in this fabric. Just saying. And if you've bought any of the Beth Studley patterns from us and you've seen her fabrics, we get a lot of um, people who buy them. They see the fabrics because quite often when we demonstrate them, we'll use other fabrics. Um, but her photos always feature these. I love that one. Beautiful big chrysanthemums. But you see how the whole collection is going together now. So there's loads of you with these in baskets. $39.99. Please don't forget to check out because we do have limited stock. Love that one. She does have such a colour palette, doesn't she? But, you know, we need space. We need space. New year, new fabric. A bit like when you buy the, um, when you buy the sensational quilts for scrap lovers. New year. Use up your fabric. Then you can buy more. <gasps> That's lovely. So isn't this a beautiful fabric collection? We've got 12 of them. And one more. Lots of you checking out on that one. And they, they see it moves into the orange. So there's the colour palette for it. Right. Gorgeous. I've just got to pile them back up. Do you know, otherwise I'm going to get really confused because I've taken everything out of the late, out of the wrappers. We'll, we'll have no idea what we're doing later. Right, I've got one other fat quarter pack from Beth. Put that one there. But this is a bigger one. Yeah, I've got to put it back in the bag because, you know, we really are going to get confused otherwise. Right. <coughs> and then I'll get really told off. This one has a review, has a review. Fabric, superb quality and beautiful design. Cannot wait to start using from Diane in the Isle of Man. Absolutely, it is great fabric and beautiful quality. Now this one has got twice as many. So this has 24 fat quarters. Again, featuring fabrics from her whole range. I'm gonna show you all of them quickly or we won't finish. So we've got that beautiful big fabric. So this collection is all, well it's all colours from her range lot which is basically purple jade mustard orange I mean they're just beautiful fabrics aren't they 24 fat quarters Beth Studley fabrics for 89.99 no are we going to reduce it it's coming it's coming He's, I know, because um, Elliot's new to producing, he's just doing it. Seventy-eight ninety-nine for 24. Look at them. Merry Christmas, everybody. 24 fat quarters. Look at them. Look how gorgeous they are. I mean, the colours are just joyful. There we go. 24. Yeah, just buy them. Yeah, just buy them. Don't tell anyone. And do you know what? Just think of what an amazing quilt you can make from those or all those lovely little homeware makes that you want to make and once you've used up all your stash you'll be needing this 78 78.99 just buy it for yourself wrap it up and pretend someone gave it to you yeah or just buy it just buy it it's lovely isn't it i love the what the fact that it is all colors of the rainbow but not primary it's um it's primary though not primary colors of the rainbow it's more sort of, well, like henna, henna patterns. But when you look at it all like that, oh, how lovely is that? That's a nice way. I mean, 24 fat quarters. I've got six metres of fabric there. 78.99. That's a fantastic price, isn't it? Have we got time for anything else? So that works out as £3.29 per fat quarter. That's well, I've even got I'm even gonna tie that one back up. Lots of you have that in baskets and people buy multiple, so well because uh because that price will go back up at midnight. Jelly roll, we haven't done jelly rolls yet. Oh we've done one. 
let's pop that back in the bag because all the bags have the codes on otherwise we're going to get to the end of the show and have an absolute piece because I've um, I've mixed everything else up right jelly rolls oh now I've seen this one before I like this one again this one is Riley Blake T with B so jelly rolls two and a half inch strips of fabric cut across the full width of the fabric and look at the colors in this so again very Riley Blake you've got corals beautiful soft dusky blues greys and then moving into um soft mustards and greens featuring bees bees and tea because it's called tea with bee but there's florals and bees and cups of tea it's a really lovely selection that 49.99 for riley blake jelly roll 40 pieces as well that's fantastic isn't it check out on that one looks lovely doesn't it oh, are we going to reduce this one oh <gasps> Ah, oh, this is great, isn't it? It's like our special Christmas. It's our, it's mine and Elliot's Christmas show. He's going to take off, take off a tenner. Thirty nine ninety nine for a Riley Blake jelly roll. Ten pounds. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to go home very quickly after this, Elliot, because at some point someone's going to find out that you've just taken ten pounds off. He's new to producing. Hannah and Cat are away, so Elliot's doing, and he's just taking money off. Thirty nine ninety nine, but we will have to put the price back up after midnight. So yeah, Elliot says, Elliot says, take advantage before he gets fired. <laughs> mm. He won't be producing again because he keeps taking money off everything. Thirty nine ninety nine for a whole Riley Blake jelly roll. Ninety nine pence. Yeah, for a strip, two and a half inches by forty four inches. Ninety nine p a strip. Aren't they lovely? Mm -mm -mm. I have another Riley Blake one. Should we do another Riley Blake? This one, oh, oh, it's the same as the community. It's the community one with all the children in playgrounds. It's the same, it's the same fabric, but in a roll. So you've got all those blues and greys and pinks. This one is brand new, brand new jelly roll today. $44.99. No, this is brand new. Literally. <laughs> so that's the same as this. Um, it's the jelly roll of this collection. Let me show you like that, because then you can actually see what the prints are, which makes it a little bit easier, doesn't it? There we go. In the middle. So that is a jelly roll of all of this fabric. But it's lovely. But, you know, there's so many different things you can make with it. You know, you could just make a simple strip piece baby quilt with that, cock quilt, because it's just the colours are just soft and gentle, but a little bit fun, a little bit of quirkiness to it. $44.99. Um, but Elliot's not allowed to crash the price of that one because it's brand new today, and he really, really, really will get into trouble for that one, which is a shame, really. Let's do this one. This is completely different. This is Moda. It's called, um, yes, Maria Sky. This is very, very traditional quilt colours. I'm going to have to take this one out of the packaging. Brand new. Wow. Look at the colours on this. This reminds me, actually, of a lot of the quilts in this book. It, your real sort of traditional American quilts. Look, same sort of colours, aren't they? Reminds me of that. You've got all these beautiful muted navies moving into vintage creams and then that lovely cardinal red that you've seen in a lot of American quilts and brown. So if you want to make a really traditional looking quilt, I mean, look, you can see it is those sort of colourways, isn't it? Well, this is a Moda book and this is Moda fabric, so I'm not surprised. So you have got... 40, did you check in it is 40, 40 strips, 40, two and a half inch strips, very, very traditional colourways. So if you buy a couple of these, then you would be able to make, I mean, yeah, Maria Sky, 1840 to 1860, there you go. It is the real, in fact, it's, when you look at it like this, 
you know, it's hard, isn't it, sometimes when you see quilts like this and you think, I want to make them, where am I going to get that fabric from? Like that one, you see, look, you've got in there the browns, the blues, the beiges. Absolutely perfect. So $44.99, this is brand new, Moda's Maria's Sky, 1840 to 1860. Beautiful, isn't it? $44.99. Please do check out because um, we've got a lot of you with these in Basel, especially with um, Elliot's special Christmas, Christmas present giveaways. Please do check out. Right, if you want a bit more cave, we've got this one as a jelly roll. This is called Collective Cool. Collective cool. So you've got, be look at the colourways in this. You've got, um, well, it's all, you know what, caves like so many colours. You've got bright, bright greens moving into these lovely blues and darker greens. So this is all blues and greens. But you know what he's like, he can't ever do a bit of blue and green, does he? Has to put a, has to put a little bit of orange in there as well. $44.99. There's a lot of you buying these. That's just beautiful, isn't it? In the teens of this one now, I think of people have been buying buying ahead because we had all of these fabrics on the pre-order. Oh, look, that's what it looks like. They all opened up. We had a lot of these fabrics on pre-orders. So this one has been really popular. I mean, it is gorgeous, isn't it? So when you're organising your stash and putting it into order in order to use the book, you could pop these into your stash as well in your organisation. Please remember to check out. I've got one book left and this one I first launched on there with um, Susie Duncan. It is brilliant. So the, peop the people, the people who published this book, the publishers, that'll be what they're called, they asked uh, lots of FPP designers to design a handful of their favourite designs. Then they've put them all together in one book. Now, if you love FPP or you'd like to have a go about, at it, this is a brilliant book. I absolutely love it. It's got all, it's just, um, organised into sections as well. So you've got um, garden creatures, food and drink, weather celebrations, kitchen, out and about, fruit, hobbies and leisure. So if you just want to make maybe like a little zip purse and you want to do a little bit of FPP on the front of it, there is everything in here. What's, what's even better is that it explains in absolute detail how to do foundation paper piecing and it is really good and Susie and I talked about it for quite a while about how it all works and it's very very clear it demystifies foundation paper piecing so if you've never done it you'll love it oh a review the 100 paper piece quilt blocks is a delight if you need inspiration to make a quilt tote bag or wall hanging you are sure to find it here that's that's lovely because there's loads and loads of blocks very simple ones from a tree start there and then you move all the way up to the beehive there's even a pretzel i love the pretzel or lots of really well-known fpp design that's all coming together in one place love the angel and then at the end of the book look i think the tea bag i mean you know you could make somebody buy somebody some nice teas and make a little pouch and just fpp that on the front i love that I'll admit, I mean, there's so much in, well, there's 100 blocks, but at the end of the book, there are then projects as well of what you can do with the blocks. So, and that one's by Joe Carter, who is wonderful. Now, I know you love to build up your baskets and check out in one fell swoop, but please check out because when other people will take it out. And also, on the prices that we have, dis well, Elliot has naughty discounted today, they will go up at midnight. We're not, that's not, not, not a discount forever. So if you want it, you need to check out. Anyway, thank you for joining me with this hour. I will be back um, in a few minutes' time with Jules, who's going to show us how to make this gorgeous turtle quill. And we've got a um, lovely book featuring this and lots of other projects for sort of babies and toddlers and quilts. So I'll see you back in a couple of minutes' time. It's Emma from the Swift Quilting Company. I just wanted to wish everybody on Sewing Street, from the behind the scenes crew, to the presenters, to all the viewers, a very happy Christmas and a fabulous new year. Cheers.
Hello everyone. Merry Christmas from Jane Greenoff. See you in the new year. Bye. Hello everyone, it's Cara. Just popped by to wish you all a really, really happy Christmas with your family and friends. Wishing you every happiness for 2022 and I look forward to seeing you on Sewing Street. Happy Christmas. Bye. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Hello, I'm John Taylor from John's Taylor Made. You may remember me from the Great British Make-Off competition. Um, I sewed my tablet rest last year with the lovely John Scott. Uh, Sewing Street have invited me back again to do a few more demonstrations for you, but they've also asked me to answer some questions. So the first thing I sewed was a ladybird pincushion and I made it at primary school. And my late nanny Jo, she taught me how to knit and I think I got my love of sewing from her. She used to sew on that sewing machine over there. Um, something you don't know about me is I sew standing up. Um, my husband built me this sewing table. It's very similar to the one that you see on Sewing Street. My tip is more haste, less speed. My nan was always telling me to slow down um and to enjoy what i was sewing and i would make less mistakes and we also have a youtube channel and a few facebook pages i cannot wait to start my journey with sewing street and i will see you there very soon if you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. And welcome back to Sewing Street. And I've got Jules back with me again. And we've got, oh, she's made the most beautiful quilt. Oh, it's just adorable. There it is. It's the Turtle Trot quilt. And it's really easy, which is good, isn't it? Featuring really simple piecing and applique as well. And we've got two different fabric bundles kits for you to choose from. So I'm going to have a quick run through them. So the quilt that Jules made that's hanging up behind her is in this kit. Now, they're all in this book. So in the bundle, you get all the fabric you need to make the quilt, plus the book. So the book is called Fast and Fun, Quilts for Kids, 10 Creative Designs. So if you want the book on its own, I'm gonna, we'll do the fabric bundle and the book in together, um, $8.99. $8.99 for 10 projects. When I do the kit, the kit also includes the book. So don't worry, you don't have to buy the book separate to the fabric. It includes it. But if you only want the book, $8.99. Now, I love the designs in this. They're just really fun and simple. And you know, it's like you want to make a, a quilt 
a special quilt because anything you know if it's handmade it is special you want to make it for children but you want to make something that they'll really love look how simple this one again brilliant scrap buster squares of fabrics that's pretty isn't it look really lovely sweetie me throw quilt and doll quilt so you can make the quilt for the um the child well, it could be a boy or a girl and you can make a little quilt for a doll to match i think that's adorable um love this one the jigsaw puzzle isn't this great i think this is really clever because when i saw it to start with i thought oh well, it's all curved piecing but it's not it's just the triangles that cut off the corners are quite small, so it looks like curves. But isn't that lovely? And do you know what would be a really good thing with this? If you wanted to make like a memory quilt of, its, you know, children's clothing or dresses or, you know, shorts and shirts, you could use that. I mean, it, it looks a bit like they've done that. You could use all of those in it. But use their favourite colourways. I mean, it would make a lovely quilt for... Um, a cot you could use it as a play mat as a changing mat so if you know someone who's got a new baby and you know when you take them to change you don't want to put them on the floor that's ideal isn't it I love and again you can choose your own colorways that you want with it tells you exactly how much you need of each one but I think that's really clever because it's a lot easier to look and looks and very clever this is the turtle trot quilt that Jules is going to be demonstrating for us simple piecing with squares and then these three gorgeous turtles across the bottom I'll show you the um, the kits that we're doing for those in a minute and it's got a little bit of a plique but you've got the um the templates here and it explains to you in that as well got lots of you with this in basket but this is the pickup sticks if you want a black and white one but again you can use your own colorways I really like this one entwined it looks really clever but it showcases prints that you really like because you've got the borders going around the prints. So really good. Very simple. That's perfect, isn't it? For a baby. Make it in pink, blue, neutrals, mint greens, whatever you want. Brights, primaries. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Um, nearly there. There's ten of them. Nice one. Hopscotch. I like that. This twin size quilt is perfect for a little girl who's moving into a big girl bed. But you could make it in any colour. Doesn't have to be in pinks. <laughs> The scrappy nature of the quilt allows stash fabric or a favourite collection to be used. It is lovely, isn't it? It could be used for anybody. Love to the moon and back. Oh, that's lovely. Now, they've used um, fleece, fleece fabric for that. Again, brilliant for a, a child's play mat or a changing mat. Nice present. Look, isn't that lovely? So, that's the whole book. Eight ninety nine. fast and fun quilts for kids. Now, if you want to make the turtle trot quilt that Jules has made, then in here you get, oh, past this, spots, you mean? Spots. Spots. So not the one that Jules has made then. I've confused Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> It might have been me that confused what you're working with, and I said spot. Right, so let's do pastels, <laughs> shall we? Sorry. I that's it. I've totally confused him now. Right, the pastels on one together, should they? No, <laughs> is the one that Jules has made, and in this one you get a meter and a half. I love this one that you've mm. used for the borders and as well the main part. Yeah. It's a really lovely background of turquoise, isn't it? And green. I like that one. So you get a metre and a half of that, half a metre of the blue. These are all half metres, aren't they? Yeah. Half a metre of this lovely sort of apricot with hearts, half a metre of the pink. It's all got like little lines on it. And yellow. And then a nice um, minty green one. So you get one, two, three, four, five half metres and then a metre and a half. And you get the book as well. So you get four metres in fabric in total and the book, 48.49. And that is more than enough fabric to make the quilt, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because I managed to get, well, when you're cutting, I'll show you in a second how we're doing the cutting. Mm -hmm. um, but you've already got pieces that you can piece together to make the backing. So if I right. show you the backing, um. you can either choose to back it with something else or... or you can you've do got enough yeah. left over see. to back it as well. Yeah. 
So actually, you just need wadding. Yeah. Well. And if you've got the queen size wadding from the oh, from nine o'clock hour, yeah, there's enough. You've got to enough. Do both. Yeah, you might have to just do a little bit of piecing, but. Mm. So forty-eight, forty-nine, and you've got enough fabric to do the front and the back, and that includes the book as well. So you don't need anything else. So that is the pastel colourway. Now we've also got it in a spotty colourway and Jules is going to be demonstrating with that so you'll be able to see how that works again. So remember in this bundle you get the book, then you get a metre and a half of the green spot. So that's the main fabric that's used for all your borders and your sashing. And then you get half a metre of each of, well we've got a yellow spot, a red spot, orange stripe, a blue and ivory, I'd say. It's not white, is it? Ivory. No. So four metres of fabric and the book, 39.99. So this is a slightly different price because it's a different fabric. This is from our sort of or basic range, whether you've got a, a different fabrics and that. But everything you need, you get the book as well and all the fabric you need that will be enough to make the front and the back of the quilt as well. So, Jules, how did you find this book? Yes, I like Annie's stuff. Yeah, yeah. easy. Easy, easy straight to understand. Forward. In fact, this quilt you can do, if you persevere, you can do it in a day. No, yep. wow. Definitely in a day, because I did. That's amazing. <laughs> you know, cause you and did. I had lunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you had lunch. Oh, you had lunch. <laughs> yeah, I had lunch. Uh, but yeah, it it's, looks more complicated than it is, but it's very straightforward. Mm -hmm. You're just doing a bit of piecing, which is quite nice. You get to do that bit of a plique, bit of sewing, uh, hand sewing. So, you know, it's a multitasking mm. quilt, really. But nice. Yes, very straightforward. So, so, where do you start? So, um, I just wanted to, before we went on and did some cutting, I just wanted to show you this is what I had left when I'd done all my cutting. Oh, my right. Pieces. So, so, that was the left over. Okay. Yeah, which I made a backing out of, and there's yeah. a little bit extra as well. You could probably. Maybe make a cushion or something like that. Oh, okay. So you you are you okay with it. it. Yeah. That's nice though. Um, so the cutting um, instructions very simple again. Um, she gives us all of the information that we need to have about what colour to cut and what size to cut and everything. So if you just follow that. Um, I like Annie's quilts because you get to um, label them with the letters and everything. That's the kind of thing that I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh, so um, there's a lot of subcutting, but don't be afraid about subcutting. What I will say is, if you have a look at the um, instructions about cut cutting it all, when you go down to when it says from a sorting prints cut blah blah blah, there are some W O F which is width of fabric. So cut those first before you cut out your five inch squares. Um, what it doesn't say um, here is from the yellow floral cut for two and a half inch squares, that is from the five inch square that's listed in the materials. Oh, okay. So just in case you think, well, I haven't got that, that's what that means. Right. And then the three other five inch squares are for your turtles. Um, if you go down to where it says cut in the rectangles F, G, H and I, what I like to do, I quite like jigsawy kind of things and I quite like to cut as economically as I can. Yes. So you could just cut these as you want to. There's plenty of fabric in there. If you make a mistake, it's not a biggie. But I quite like putting things together. And if you have a look on it, it says there's a four and a half inch on three of those pieces and one is a three and a half inch. So my brain said, let's cut a four and a half inch strip. Mm. So I cut some four and a half inch width of fabric strips. This is extra, but I just wanted to show you what I, what I meant. Um, and then on here it says cut uh, seven and a half inch of the four and a half inch. So if you cut the seven and a half inch on there, and it's just on the slither here because I'm just using the very ends of it. And you only want, I mean, I've, I've cut all of the fabrics there with a decent rotary cutter, you can. <laughs> rotary cutter blade, you can. A sharp one. Sharp one, yeah. Not one that we all use. Um, out of this, you want six of four and a half and you want six of um, three and a half. So you just split them up. So those are all my four and a halves coming out. And then what you would do, once you've taken them all out, I would do them all together, but just, just for an example, 
you then pop your ruler back on again. Just make sure it's level on your three right, and a half. Right, so cut the, the wider strips and then yeah. cut those down. And then that is easy cutting. Yes. So yeah. it's just to show you that if you read the instructions and think about it a little bit, you can save yourself a lot of cutting. Right. Alternatively, okay. you could get a creative grid stripology ruler mm. and, and just use that. But I, I just yes. wanted to show you, if you haven't got one of those, how easy so it is to So the ruler that you're using at the moment is the one that's in the graphics. I mean, that's the perfect ruler for cutting width of fabric. Yeah, I love it. Oh, we've got a special offer on this one. Ooh. Mm. How much have we got? Ooh. How much have we got? How much have we got off it then, Elliot? Twenty three ninety nine down to eighteen ninety nine. <gasps> Why would you oh. do it when I'm on air then? I know. Well, well luckily that will last till midnight. Ooh. Hello. Mm. Shh, don't tell anybody. If Shh. there's any left, I need a new one of those. I think mine is twenty years old, and some of the you might knock the corners off a little bit sometimes. I've... That's the Christmas <laughs> special. I have chipped some corners off mine. <laughs> <laughs> Chips and nuggets. <laughs> and um, also some of the markings have disappeared, but I have had it for 20 years or more. It's all right, but the markings that disappear are the ones that you really want. Yeah. So it's a two and a half, isn't it? It's always I mean, I'm really half. impressed how long it's lasted, but... Um, that it hasn't got sat mm, on or Maybe anything. I need to be treating myself to a new 1899 ruler. Mm. Christmas present to maybe myself. Maybe you do. <laughs> Just in case I don't get what I want. <laughs> have you pushed that li wish list up again? <laughs> Well, you see, the thing is, I like a surprise. But you like a surprise from a list? No. No, just any surprise? I want a surprise. Well, your surprise this year will be an empty carriage then, won't yeah, it? Yeah, I, <laughs> want an, I want a surprise because I want someone to put time and thought. I never ask anyone what they want, ever. We, we have lists going on and then we kind of select from the list. Oh, That's okay. what we do. Right, so rather than our Christmas presents, let's go no, sorry, with this, this is much more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about what, how we set up our Christmas presents. Christmas. What do you want most for your Christmas present? So what I'm going to do is I've cut the piece for the panel, as she says, swiftly moving on. Um, and then what I did was I marked up. Now, this is a little bit short, but it doesn't matter. You, if you set it on your cutting mat, I marked up with my friction pen because I love my friction pen. Don't um, forget to check out inches. your baskets with this ruler because that 1899 will have to go one? back up after two midnight. And we only have a limited number of those in stock. Otherwise, um, Elliot gets his legs. Otherwise, stuck. Elliot's will be in trouble. And the um, kit that Jules is working at the moment is the Spot Turtle Trot Quilt. 39.99 includes the book. So, two inches up from the bottom. This is just a placement line. You're going to iron over this, obviously, because you're going to be iron on your bonds or web. And then we want four inches, no, four and a half inches from each end. So let's do a, oops, let's do it that way around. And again, these are just placements where you put your turtle shells, that's all. Ah, oh, so that's that cent, that, This that is central. to centralise it. And I've made sure that I folded my fabric so my centre line is folded. So this is the bit that the turtles will be going on. It is indeed. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to get your bonder web. I think um, we've probably got it on the website if we've not got it yeah. on today. If you go and have a look on the website, sewingstreet.com, and just put in bonder web in the search section and you'll be able to find it there. You don't need a lot. No, but the packet that you get, which when you open it out, yes. it's kind of like that, is enough to do at least two. Oh, okay. So what i did was i also cut a strip of my green because i know that i want to have lots of heads and tails and feet of the yes, same color right so i cut my strip first of all and it was fine because i got plenty of fabric to do that with so you pop your bonder web on you draw around it with a pencil um, and once you've done that you roughly cut around so i've got the scratchy side on the underneath and the, and the smooth side on the top, that's the side I've drawn on. And then when you're putting it on your fabric, it goes on to the wrong side of your fabric. Okay. Okay. So once you've done that, you take your five inch squares. And I have my iron on. Yes, you do. And you will. Now, um, quite often what I would do is have a spare bit of fabric underneath or a pressing mat or 
something so it doesn't go onto the mat I just need to make sure that it's not going to go onto this little mat under here so as soon as I've got quite a lot of fabric I'm just going to take a bit because <laughs> Otherwise, we get told off. Yeah, it does ruin your mat. Yeah, it does ruin. I've your mat. got lots of scraps of curtain lining and things yeah. that I use for this because I've ruined many an iron. And I, your ironing board stays sticky for quite a while. It does, doesn't it? Goes eventually. Well, if you put another piece of um, mm. stuff on top of it, it will do it. Oops, doing that left-handed. So there we go. And then what you will do is make sure that you cut around it nice and close to the. Uh, line that you've drawn well actually on the line that you've drawn so this will be don't take your paper off yet cut round the line cut round the line and you can see my line wasn't very straight or whatever it, it doesn't matter so you could piece together strips to make this couldn't you, you could and then cut it out if you wanted a stripy turtle or if you wanted little squares or hexagons oh, you yeah. could make a proper hexagon looking turtle and then cut it out from and the then cut it out that would be nice wouldn't it so that's what you do to all of them and then to take the backing off just scratch your backing and it will peel off okay and that is now ready to apply wherever you want it to be okay yeah so you'll do that to all of the pieces so you want three shells and you want three heads three tails and six legs right so cut all of those out first what I was going to show you on the strip that I'd cut out if you are careful where you put everything on the bonder web so if you did that so I've got the line mm. the, the straight edge of my bonder web and you just so that's very economical it. economical and quick and lazy quick no quick and easy <laughs> yes maybe you because these are the yeah. quick and lazy quick guide and lazy. to quilting yeah. by jules uh, who else <laughs> quick and lazy guide yeah, quick to and quilting. lazy um but then you see you can just cut all of that yeah, out you've perfect. saved on fabric you've saved on bond away yeah makes it a lot easier <laughs> Quick, lazy, and frugal. Yes. <laughs> Quick, lazy, tight. <laughs> no, frugal. Frugal. Right, okay, so I have all of the pieces cut out because I thought it'd be a bit boring if you just watched me do it all of it. Oh, no, we love watching you cut out, Jules. <laughs> it's fab. Especially when we cut the heads off the turtles. Yeah. So then you decide how you're going to do it. So your centre one, put your centre one on first. Uh, what we're going to have. Does it give you any guidance in the book about? I think if you want to follow the colours or thereabouts, but. Oh, when no, it does give you some measurements, though. Yeah. Like how far the shell should be oh, from yes. the edge and the bottom. So, so there is. Two up. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you don't just put them on willy nilly. <laughs> whack them on. But you could have them um, like going in different directions. Yeah. You, you could have them kissing, couldn't you? That would be And then nice. the one at the end and going the other way going. Go, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> threesome he's <laughs> a crowd so there we are so but you could have them going up and down a little bit couldn't you I you could if mean. you wanted I to mean, it does tell you what to do but you wouldn't have to you don't have to if you don't want to but on this one I've just folded that in half so I know my center line that's my center line of the fabric because I made sure that I did that too and then it goes two inches up so what you can do is either you can do them one at a time, but bear in mind this is a friction pen, so it will <laughs> the pen will come off. Yes, don't do what I do. Yeah. <laughs> or you can do it a piece at a time if you want to. So we'll I'll get two on there. And then your the heads and tails, th they're flat, but they're just so that you can tuck them under. Oh, I see. So he can be looking after. Oh, that's quite head. good. So they've included that on the yeah. template then. Oh, I like that. And that, that. I'm not going to get that one. I'm going to have to go along, but that's fine. And that's for him. And then the tails, the same. So you just tuck that under that way. You're getting the idea. I think it's quite nice to see what they look like. And then his feet. So his feet go... Tucking under as well. 
And when you're pressing these down, this might be the time that you want to put a pressing cloth over it as well. Right, okay. Because things start to move, don't they? Right, Aww. so that's that. We'll they actually look like snails without the legs. <laughs> we'll just do him in the <laughs> middle. <laughs> yeah. you could, but then you yeah. could make it a snail. You could make it a little bit more roundy and it would be a snail. <laughs> and it would be called the snail yeah. shuffle rather than the <laughs> snail <turtle> trail. Trot. <laughs> <laughs> or the Loch Ness Monster, perhaps. Yes. It's the you head. Because it, it goes just the like head. swimming, doesn't it? Yeah. With it, it's no legs. It's gone now. Gone. It's gone. <laughs> so you're pressing, not ironing. <laughs> and then it's a surprise to see whether he's actually moved. Is he fast enough? I'll only get half of this one on. It's only turtles. It's only turtles. You are going to secure it anyway, because you're going to be um, doing a little blanket stitch or zigzag stitch or a stitchy stitch, whatever you want to do around it. I did a blanket stitch. It says in the book to do a blanket stitch. But if mm. you've got a <laughs> decorative, a decorative stitch that you want to do, there we are. Yeah, I mean, it says you can do a straight stitch or a blanket stitch. Yep, you can do whatsoever you please. Now, haven't done it on here yet. I didn't set it up for a blanket stitch, so let's do one. Oh, right. So let's have a little drive first of all to make sure that it's little doing what it piece. should. Yeah, I always keep a bit of my a bonder web, a pleeper that I've cut off. Yeah. To press onto a bit to have a go. Right, okay, that looks all right. What you don't want, um, because it's quite small, you don't want anything with with the swing too long, because you've got to get around some right. corners. Oh, okay, so you need quite a tight applique yeah. stitch. Yeah, and what I found was, um, I know you can go wiggly in and out and all the rest of it, but I went all the way around the shell first. I started here on its neck, so that when I got round to this bit again, I could then go around the head, <laughs> and I broke on and off. <laughs> That'll be in the book then. <laughs> Quick and lazy guide. <laughs> I think we need to think I've of a new title. I've almost finished this book already. <laughs> yeah, no, no, how quick got loads. <laughs> I think we need to call it something else. <laughs> Easy quilting. <laughs> Although, actually, to be honest, I think if I saw a book that's called The Quick and Lazy Guide, I'd buy it. Yeah. Because it's honest, isn't it? <laughs> Always plan your route so you don't have to reverse stitch at all. Right, OK, let's see if that'll do it. Because sometimes when you make a new block or something, it's only after you've made like two or three, you think, oh, that would have been easier to I do. I could have done way. that, yeah. Mm. yeah. And when you're turning your corners, just make sure that when you come back out, that the swing is still onto the fabric that you're appliquing, not onto your background fabric. Right. Otherwise, Otherwise it looks it's a bit the wrong odd. way. Yeah. Well, as you've turned the corner, you, you've just got to know where your stitch is. And if you're not sure, just hand crank it. <laughs> yeah, because you might think you know which way it's going to go. So what stitch are you using there, then? I'm doing the blanket stitch. Oh, OK. A quick, <laughs> quick and easy blanket quick, stitch. <laughs> really quick and easy. Right, OK. So quick and as lazy. that comes out, there we go. And I quite like curves. I quite like driving around curves. Yeah. Well, it's more interesting you can pick up a bit of speed. Yeah. Well, it's a nice um, shallow one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> As we come off road, do a bit off roading. I like the um, the blanket stitch looks really effective, doesn't it? You could do it in different colours as well. It said, uh, I think it says to match your thread. Of course, that didn't happen. I did contrast. Yeah, but it's your quote. You can do what you like with it, don't you? These are the only serving suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you've got to its head, so let's just see then where you can going. go in. Yes, but you've just got to do the old liney uppy thing again. Okay. A bit slow around its head, but you get the general idea. So you go through, you go around all of them nice and gently, and take your time and have a good.
time and place. Oh, we've had a lovely message from Marianne on Facebook. See how much she's enjoyed our show this morning. Oh, bless. Thank you. She, we've made her day. I've been sitting there <laughs> with my arms folded. Um, well, Marianne, if you've got any tips for Jules's brand new book. Yes, please. Yeah, add um, them in. Quick and be coming guys out. To, to sewing. How quick can we do it? <laughs> yeah, it could be quick. Yeah, how quickly and late. Yeah. yeah. Well, quickly is to write it. Lazy is. Could everybody else please contribute to yes. Jules's new quick and lazy guide to sewing? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm quite good with language. Mm. I'll put it into the right language. Just send whatever you yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. I think it's inspired. I bet everyone's got a quick and lazy tip. I reckon they will have. Mm. And then you just draw on. I was just going to look at the. There we are. He's got a nice smiley face. Oh, and you have to put a face on. So put your face on. So he's got a nice smiley face. And he's got his like his eyes are closed because he's rapturous. Because he's um yeah. Why is his eyes closed then? Because he's following on instinct. Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's, that's his pit stop. Yeah, I think that'd be the one without the legs because he's swimming. <laughs> and then what you do is you just get um, your thread. Now you can just use uh, normal thread or you can use embroidery thread. I found some metallic thread. Ooh. So uh, I decided to get that. A bit of get shimmer. That. Yes. And then. Oh, and you do that by hand? Yeah, just That's a quick... not very quick or lazy, is it? Well, it is That's the way we do it. That's time consuming. Not really. <laughs> How many stitches do you have to do? <laughs> not many. Oh, that's all right then. The more threads you use, the less stitches you have to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Top tip that's another one. <laughs> Top tip 98. <laughs> the more threads you use, the less stitches you have to do. But that will give you just a, a bit of a basic idea. Okay. So you can, I can, yeah, you can do it nice and neatly and better. Yes, and you can add all sorts of details. Yeah. You could put names on them, couldn't you? Well, I thought on the shell. On the shell. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great, Definitely, it? yeah. Or um, Terry, Trevor. The other thing that I, yeah. <laughs> Turtle was here. The, the other thing that I thought as well, my friend's daughter's just moved into her first house. Mm. I thought about doing a little cushion with one of those on. Just use that a big yeah, head. Welcome nice. to your new shell. Yes. <laughs> I know, well, that's the good thing about these books. And I know what, I mean, all, our, all you viewers out there are the same. You get an idea, you start off with one thing like this, and then it becomes a, into another idea, doesn't it? Think, yeah. Oh, I could use that for that and use that for that. There we go. And <laughs> as you can see, I was a bit speedy around the corner, so the shell's a little bit inwards. But there you go. So that's that. I just fasten it off on the back. I think that was probably about I like the black and white one ten as well. stitches. Job done. So you just do all three of those. His head's coming off, but never mind. Um, and then iron away your... Iron his head back on. There we are. So he's happy there. Happy so that's the very sleep. quick. Yeah. And you can, t of course, you can take your time. <laughs> yes, you can. Of course, please feel of free course, please take to your take time your time. And piece it and everything. And do the right thing in the right order, etc. So that's um, where we're at at the minute. So we've got that ready to go. The next thing that we've got, so there's a chart here that tells you the order that you're going to put, or suggested order that you'd put your um, quilt bars in. Um, some of them are pieced, and that's where you've been subcutting and all the rest of it. So right. this is what I mean <laughs> by, by my letters. I love my letters. Um, and I've done some of them because obviously sewing them all together would be a bit tedious for you to watch. But no, I've told you we love watching you sew. <laughs> the speed sew. Some so people will organise and put more in individual bags and everything, don't they? Mm -hmm. It's always I love to know how everyone organises their things when they do it because you know everyone does this sort of process their own way. Yes. And you just make it up because it's not something that ever says in a book. This is the way to organise. So. Well, it might suggest how to do it, yeah. but then you still have got your own opinion. I know, but things, then it's nice you? to hear what everyone else does because you think, well, that's a good yeah. idea. Tell me about your, your organisation. <laughs> I usually just have mine in piles and hope that nobody, nobody comes can, in the room. is allowed in until it's all done. Yes. <laughs> and then I, oh, I label them with a friction pen and then have fear and, and dread you, that yeah. I'm going to iron them. So the only one that I haven't pieced together is row F. So row F, row F, which is the chunky one, because I thought that would be fine. So what you do is you decide on your order. Now, 
on the quilt uh, mm. picture, I just kind of went with what was closest in my mind to that order. Right. What I did like was the fact that this orange one has got stripes because you can make it look different. Oh, of Because you can twist it. Yeah. So yes. it looks different. And on this one, what I liked was the yellow and the pink one because again, they vaguely got stri so stripes. So you can them twist around. them. Yeah. Mm. So you can twist them, which I quite liked. Um, so on the row F, so um, all the pieced rows, you simply just piece them together. So you'll do the whole row in a random order um, and just sew the whole lot with a quarter of an inch seam. I would still do them in pairs and then pairs again because don't forget you're still, oh hello. We're still on blanket, uh, what do you call it, stitch? Blanket stitch. Yeah, blanket stitch. Switch it off, switch it back on again. That's fine. Um, anyway. That's it, thank you very much. And on here, I don't have to chain piece, but at home I would chain piece. So the, um, the, the code that's on screen, sorry, can't get my words out, is the pastel one, which is the quilt that Jules has got hanging up behind her, the one that she made before. That's the pastel one, the £48.49. And remember, that includes the book too. So you get four metres of fabric to make this quilt, including the book, which has got patterns for 10 kits in to 10 quilts. And don't forget, you can get a back out of it. And remember, there's enough, because there's four metres of fabric in there, there's enough to get the back of the quilt as well out of it. You might even be able to use, you know, you were saying about the star quilt and things like that. I don't know because I didn't have it long enough to play around. Mm. But you could possibly, with this kit, still get something else out of the book. Well, it? we've all got fabric in our stash. So it's lovely when you have some left over because you join that together, befriend it with other fabric, yes. and then you can make something else as well. What I really like is trying different weights of fabric together and just seeing what works with oh, each other. Okay. So like put a tweed with a fleece mm. with a something else see, and just yeah. see what stabiliser you might need and all that kind of stuff. Quite like doing things like that as well. Okay. Which you could, yeah, you could do. Well, there's one quilt in here that uses fleece. Yes, the like that, star these, one, isn't the it? The one with the moon and the stars on. I th which I think is lovely. Well, they call it, it's American, they call it minky plush, but I think that's fleece. It's that, um, enough. <laughs> you know, the, um, the very soft fleece that you often use for toy making that's called like cuddle soft and that kind of thing. I'm glad you said toy making. I thought you were going to say something else. It's <coughs> called minky. Minky. Minky plush. So what you've got now, you can't see all of it, but I've got the whole length of them. I've got some behind the counter here. So the idea is that you, the top part, so this part is mm. 28 and a half inches. Right. And the bottom part is eight and a half inches. Okay. So we'll put a border around the applique piece. So mm. you've already got that in your calculations. So now what you need to do is decide where this 28 and a half inches is going to split. So if I put them all level, some of them will join into lines. And you don't really want that. You want it to be uneven. Yes, OK. So the suggestion is that you take a little bit off the top, line it up to 28 and a half inches, chop it off, and then see what the next one does. Right. So you can stagger them. OK. But once you've done that... Because it is just your... random, isn't it? Yeah. Well, planned random. Planned random. <laughs> planned random. Um, you could, if you're not too worried about whether it's staggered or it's not, you could just keep the strips all continuous, sew them all together, oh, yeah, and okay. then do your 28 yes. and a half, and yes. guess which way I did. But anyway, yeah, that'll be, yeah. <laughs> tip 25. That was, that was the way I did it. <laughs> um, and then I labelled all of the others with what I thought was closest to the colours on here. Okay. So you just lay them out, and I'll just show you what these look like laid out, just so you get a bit of an idea as to kind of the general look of the quilt. So, I've got, that I might have to go a bit wider. So that's first row, second row at some sort of random cut point, and then third row, 
So I'm looking at the chart and looking at my letters. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I come, come to put it all together, I'll think, I don't know what I did. I have to look back on the telly and see which order I put them in. That's B, that's H. So just, you're getting the idea now. Um, H, C. Right, there we go, nearly there. So if you think, well, actually, doing it that way, I've got too many... Yeah, I quite whatever. like the fact, though, that you've got, um, you know, plain strips interspersed with piece strips. Yeah. There we go. So that... It works really well, doesn't it? That's your general... Your general... So that's what generally the spot one... Would look like. And then... That's, that's the code that's on the right of the screen. That's that one. Spot turtle trot. That's the one that Jules is demonstrating with now. And what you will do is, so on your um, applique bit, you will have the little cornerstones. That, so this is one of the five inch squares, if you remember that we've cut into quarters. Yeah. So you will have an end piece. So the end pieces, you sew a cornerstone to the top and the bottom. Oh, okay. And then that joins into the piece there. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then you've got the long piece and the short piece goes down this end. So you have a long piece going up there. And then across the top, you will have, top and bottom, you will have this. So effectively, you're making a frame mm. around there. The only thing that you'll just have to watch out for is that when you sew this together, so you'll put on the cornerstones onto one of the L pieces, mm. which is this. Then you will sew the top and bottom onto here, and then you'll join that. The only part that you really have to match up is that bit. Yeah. So where your cornerstone is, you'll just need to match this seam with this seam. Otherwise, it'd be wonky. Yes. And that's the only real. Well, that's quite nice, really, then, isn't it? Because you can handle it one or two. Yeah. This one is loads. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. But you can match it fairly easily. Well, also, it means you don't need such long strips, is it? Because if you had a long strip going all the way down, they'd have to be joined somewhere. Yeah. Because yeah. they wouldn't go across the width of the fabric. So that works quite well, doesn't it? Yeah. So okay. it works nicely. And then your binding at the end. Yeah. So um, on this one, we've done it in the. Um, in the green and for the binding you can either so when you're joining binding you mm. can either join it yeah show us how to join the binding so you because we, we don't often we miss this we don't, don't we, often do that yeah show us show us show us i'll show you the really long and so difficult way <laughs> 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 so these are your binding strips mm. how wide so are they the these are two and a quarter mm. So what you can do, there's two ways of doing your binding. Either you do it so it's mitered, which means that you've got a nice diagonal piece. So when you're doing that, you would have right sides together. Yeah. And make a square. Then you can you can draw it on if you want to, but you draw on a line properly with properly a ruler. With the actual ruler. <laughs> with the actual ruler. Not just or just by hand general style. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you would sew from corner to corner which would leave you with a nice Diagonal mitered binding. join. So you could do that. Yeah. However, I decided I didn't want to do that because I've got lots of straight lines. So I wanted to keep all my straight lines on the binding as well. Yes. And then if I wanted to do a variation, it's when I was quilting it. That right. would be my so variation. Oh, OK. Just because that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. But you can do whatever you want. So if we're making a binding, um, if you're making a straight binding, you just literally, and I don't even bother cutting off the selvages. <laughs> Another quick and yeah, easy. Put it 132. Just <laughs> Maybe it could just be tips in lines, you know. Yeah. 565 tips. Yeah. You could arrange them into sections. 
Yeah, couldn't you? Beginning, middle and end. Well, well. they like begin, like binding, quilting, cutting, organising. General being lazy. Dressmaking. So, you know, you could have sections. Could. But to save writing too much. Yeah. Because that takes too long. <laughs> just bullet point them all. Uh, or just use a diagram. <laughs> Photograph, that's it. So that will be <laughs> how your binding is. So then what you would do... I think there's a lot of money in this book. Well, I'll let you produce uh, it. I'll just give the ideas. You've got four minutes, Jules. Oh, it won't take me four and minutes Elliot's to iron this. said it twice, so I think he meant is it. Is it four? Four so minutes, then, four. Jules. So then what you would do... Probably three now. <laughs> is you... Oh, hello. Break the iron. You iron it into half. So you literally, because you've cut it straight, everything's going to be fine. Wrong sides together. Wrong sides together. Yes, wrong sides together. Because the next thing that you're going to do is fit it onto the front of your quilt. So this is an English binding. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, that's just a me thing, perhaps. But it tends to be in, if the book is written in... The UK, Europe, this is the binding that we tend to use. If it's written in America, they tend to put it on the back first oh. and bring it over to the front. Do they? Why is that then? Um, just, just because. Thing. Yeah, just because. They cut the backing bigger so that uh, what you can do on the backing is, so if that, that was your backing oh, and, right, and, and that was your quilt, what you would do then is if that was the backing, yeah. you would tuck in tuck in and tuck over. Oh, I see. So, so the you, binding backs the And quilt. actually, it's quite sensible because you can then do um, just normal top stitching and, and you don't have to worry about the back. You don't have to catch anything. Do you know what? That's what I'm going to do Yeah, that's for quite now. a nice quick and lazy yeah. tip, isn't it? Missed that one before, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, and I guess you could mitre the corners quite easily. Oh, yeah, you, you can still do it. Fold yeah. them all in. Yeah. Oh, I'm liking that one. So See, there we the, go. We, the book is coming together in sections. Yes, now, isn't we've it? almost done it. Quick and easy. If you've got any more quick and lazy tips for Jules, <laughs> could you message studio at sewingstreet.com? <laughs> so now what you do is on the front of your quilt, so imagine this is the front of your quilt with your yeah, backing yeah. and all the rest of it. So you would start at the side of your quilt, tuck in the end, and Pin it. So I've gone through uh, top of the quilt, I've gone through wadding and the back of the right. quilt. Imagine. Yeah, just got to just imagine, imagine this a story. is a quilt. And then I pin about that much along, about four inches ish along. Mm. And from then on, line up the edges and sew a quarter of an inch seam. So what you're doing is you're attaching this part. Then what you're going to do at the very end is turn it over and then turn it under. So you've got the nice little nice run that goes edge. all the way around. And you can either slip stitch on the back or machine. Surely machine with much quicker. I normally slip, slip stitch, but in a day, <laughs> machine slip <laughs> stitch. But in a day, no, we... I was hand stitched because I am truly rubbish at catching the back, however hard I well, try and yeah. however wide I make my binding. I know, it is it is tricky. But the other thing that you can do if you want to machine it is use a decorative stitch and then nobody knows. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yes. What was but that I just tip? What? Yeah, well, that's a good one. <laughs> but even if I make it extra wide, still doesn't always catch it. Nope. No. Just, just so I just slip stitch because I, I hate going round and catching And the then boots. having to do it again. Very annoying. Yes. So Quite. There um, we go. So that was well, new round. Well, that was fab. Thank you so much, Jules. I'm just <laughs> going to go through the um, the bundles and we'll come back to you. Um, so in the one that's on the that side of the screen, look at that. There, that one. Oh, look at that. That's quite impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Now I'm going to be a weather girl next. <laughs> the, in the north <laughs> and in the south. You have to have a green screen, don't you? And yes. they go things like that, don't they? Yes. And it will be cloudy. Anyway, that kit there. Um... That is the Spot Turtle Trot Quilt. In the, in the kit, you get the book. Don't forget you get the book, which has 10 fast and fun quilts for kids. It's gorgeous. Love the jigsaw one. In the bundle, you get 
four meters of fabric which includes a meter and a half of the green spot you get yellow spot red spot orange stripes blue swirly bits and then a ivory which is used for the um the background especially for the turtles um please don't forget to check out of this quilt because there are lots of you with it in baskets 39.99 four meters and if everyone who's got it in their basket checks out we have only got a few left it's a brilliant it's brilliant because you've got more than enough fabric to make the front and the back or make a couple of quilts and you've got the book as well 39.99 you can't say better than that can you um i have also um this one that's just about to come on screen yeah the weather is coming in from that side down oh i'm getting better at this now you have to go the other side that side, 48, 49. I'm getting better at that. Um, it's really hard. It's like looking yourself in the mirror. I know. It's all the wrong way around. Um, in this one, obviously, you get the Faster Bun quilts for kids. And this is the one that Jules made that's hanging up behind her. Meet of half light. So what is this fabric? It's really nice. The, um, oh, it's is free it spirits. or something it's called? Oh, gems or... I don't know. What's oh, it's Odile. I can't, can't pronounce her name because it's <laughs> French. Odile Bellieu. 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 What's the title mm. of it? Is it, is it something raindrops or something like that? It's free spirits. Anyway, you get oh. half, one and a half meters of that gorgeous free spirit fabric. Then you get half a meter each of um, this one that's used for the background. I like that because it's like a mosaic paving. Uh, a yellowy stripey fabric and a pinky stripey fabric, and then an apricot stripey one with hearts and a blue dotty one. And that is for creating the quilt that's behind jewels. Um, we've also got backing fabric in two colour weights. This one is three metres, so this must be extra wide. Whoa, that's nice, isn't it? I like that because it looks like it's got jewels on it. Is it mine then? Uh, the code is YV6687. Oh, we haven't got that one. That's a, right, we'll, we'll find out though because I quite like that one. It looks like it's got little jewels in it. Is it like a hand? Is it that even the ruler. Thing? So the very long, very long ruler, yes, that Jules is currently demonstrating, which is ideal <laughs> for cutting across the full width of fabric. <laughs> And Jules and I both want one, so can you leave two behind? Eighteen ninety nine <laughs> down from twenty three ninety nine. Perfect. It's the first ruler that you need because when you're rotary cutting, the first thing you'll probably do is cut strips from fabric, and you can cut anything smaller than that and angles as well. It's just when you have smaller ones or square ones, it's a little bit easier. Now that is for today only because Elliot slashed the price. <laughs> oh, he was no, he was allowed to do this one. Oh. Well, that's what he says anyway. <laughs> So eighteen ninety nine, and it is amazing. Creative Grids are fab because they grip the fabric beautifully. Oh look, we've got a review from Craft and Mervisy side. Very good quality. I expect to get lots of use from this. I only had a very small ruler before, so this makes a big difference oh, when yeah. cutting out. Yes. Well, I've got a big ruler than that. As I say, I use it all the time. But it, it, it you has... need a big one, and you need a small one, and a square one. I've discovered. But the advantage of this mm. is it's six and a half. So all the blocks that yeah. we were doing earlier. My current one Whoosh. is six inches, you see. No. And that extra half You inch. need the half, yeah. Mm. yeah. We do need that. Well, thank you, Jules, for thank today. Thank you very much. And you're not going to be Christmas, in everybody. now till after Christmas. No, January the 12th, I think it is, so a month. Oh, ages. What I are know. you going to do with yourself? Not. Sit around watching Christmas films? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to do my quick and easy tips. Oh, oh you've got that yeah. book to write. Well, I've you done it by tomorrow. Yeah, you'll have done fine. it because they'll all be sent into Jules. <laughs> yeah. That in amongst eating quality street. Yeah. You can do the two And uh, other chocolates are available, but not in my house because I've eaten them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you so much. We've had, had a lovely day with you. Anyway, that's Sewing Street finished. Oh, we've got a picture Robin. before Sewing Street finishes. Oh, just finished my Robin table runner. Thank you all for the pattern, Rebecca, and happy Christmas to all. Wow, that's quite nice. impressive. Done it already. Yeah, lovely. Oh, that's it's got really 680 pretty. look as well. I think is that 680? Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. 680. 680 in the background. Think? Love you so Not much. Jealous Thank at you all. for sending me the picture of the Robin. I'm really pleased you've done that. Anyway, so um, don't go anywhere because Yarnane is coming up next. But tomorrow on Sewing Street is who have we got presenting tomorrow, Elliot? 
John will be back tomorrow. Yay. Um, eight o'clock, it's design fabrics. And nine o'clock, we've got Sally Ann Harrison demonstrating quilts without corners techniques. Um, Ten o'clock is projects you'll love. Love that title. De guaranteed projects you'll love at 10 o'clock. 11 o'clock, Step It Up Quilt with Sally Ann. Oh, so with that is going to be a really good quilting day. She is such an expert. I don't think Sally Ann will be giving you a quick and lazy tips. She's, she always, I, every time she's on air, I learn something amazing from her. She's so clever. Um, 12 o'clock is sewing machines and adjust to form. So that is Sewing Street tomorrow. Now don't go anywhere because we've got Yarn Lane coming up and it's all about lighting because we know what it's like with knitting and crochet and lighting. We need it. So I will see you back here um, in a few minutes time but if you're if you're watching on tv fine you can see on the same channel if you're watching on youtube or on the interweb you need to move on to www.yarnlane.com um, same account applies and the pmp if you've bought anything on sewing street already it climbs it moves on to there i will see you back here in just a few minutes time